Hello, and welcome to Spotlight, the official podcast of Grapple. I'm Better. I'm JP. And I'm Matty. I've just been in the uh, Patreon and YouTube member exclusive uh, pre-show, hearing all about uh, Matty's trip to Vegas. Gareth called in from a uh, from a flight he was about to catch in Dublin. Hopefully, he made it, and he's uh, and he's he's all good. Probably landed um, now. <laughs> probably has, yeah. <laughs> Those flights are up and down, and uh, but yeah, good to uh, good to have you back, Matty, back in the uh, back in the country. And obviously, yeah, people want uh, tales of your uh, your top fives, your five to one um, different uh, American uh, fast food places, burgers. We got it. Uh, we got it all covered, but you made it back in one piece. Yeah, and I'm glad to be to be back in a way because it seems like I missed a fucking shitload of stuff <laughs> going on. Oh, there's and a I reason he's here, by the way. I wasn't meant to be on oh, as yeah. well tonight, was I? I'm, I'm oh. sticking around for the first segment. Like, Behind the scenes, yeah. We didn't invite him, did we, JP? We just got a message in the group chat <laughs> now and hey, I'm calling an audible on Spotlight tonight. He's got that power now. How'd that happen, JP? What happened? <laughs> It, it's Matty's world and we're all living in it, mate. That's his, it's as, it really is as simple as that. Um, oh, but I'm, I'm here for it again. This is, I, I Matty can see where it goes. As enemies. Is that no, what I just thought you should want to hear me thoughts on the Edge v Christie and I quit match and the Jericho Hook match that I watched on Dynamite last week in Vegas. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Not, I know not a response Gareth. to Gareth's Smackdown review. I was going to say he's safely on a plane right now. That's probably the best place for him to be. We spoke yeah, about that in person. We spoke about Retro that Retro powers exploded, did they? Hey, that's a, uh, each other, <laughs> you know what obviously I didn't agree with the word he said but I loved it I was laughing me I don't I loved the emotion I loved like the, just the tirade he went on like like I'm guessing everyone else did it was great it was well, it was amazing well, Equal parts are best and worst performing a uh, YouTube video in a while. That one, good in numbers, <laughs> bad in uh, all your mates. Do the wee Gareth and people like that. Oh, no, 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 uh, no. In the comments, in the uh, with the I'm one downs. of one, Beto. I'm no sheep, as JP knows. <laughs> I don't follow those list. I'm the old we, guy. Even, we even got it. It's an all. It's all fake, you know. Comment, and I was like, "That's Matty. That's Matty." The better one hundred percent. <laughs> Where have I had enough to throw that one in? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. You, it was you. Uh, oh, we, we saw the worst of humanity uh, in our YouTube comments. Yeah, help us out here. We are. Um, we've got a small YouTube channel uh, going, and um, we are very much an, an audio podcast. So the uh, YouTube channel's still growing. So if you don't uh, follow us over there, it is massively helpful for uh, if anybody ever subscribes. Cost you nothing. Throw a like on the videos. Get us a few yeah. more thumbs up to compare to the. I think it's something like fifty-three <laughs> thumbs down we've got on that video currently. Uh, I didn't what? know you had that many burners, Matt. But yeah, it would help genuinely. Please do. Um, you got more than one account subscribe to that too be boss thank you <laughs> it was that way honestly I'd say again it was an incredible video for good or oh. bad it was <laughs> well there's more where that come from as you were uh, yeah. knocking around um, Vegas Matt um me and, me and JP got to be virtually in Vegas as we cover Global Force Wrestling on the Patreon. Notice you, you, you skipped out on that one. Did well. I did watch um, it though, didn't I, JP? I watched it back, back in the few months back. I'd seen it all. I'd seen it all. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> That's Because originally, this is, this is obviously for, for Eddie's, um, the, the last show that we've done, which is Eddie uh, Eddie Sideburn's year one. Uh, global uh, year one? Although, mm. in this weird way, it's shown two and a half years after they were actually recorded. So it should be going into year three, really. Uh, GFW Amped. So we talked all things Global Force, which we were going to be doing originally. Yeah. And then, Matty, that's how you, I'm assuming you've ended up with watching quite, quite, quite a bit of it. What's the, me and you discussed the JP a while back, didn't we? Like, as just, it felt like you were watching. Uh, obviously, I'm going to listen to the show back, guys, but. Like watching the same like backstage segments or video package over and over again, like you were losing your mind, JP, wasn't it? That's what it oh, was I'd like. force you to do the show for the real life hung over on Sunday. <laughs> and like you'd seen that. I, I feel like that's just a waste of human time. Like I spent like I spent maybe not the full ten hours watching it on Sunday. Might have done a uh, done, done a John Pollock and thrown a one point two speed on at certain uh, certain points. But like you say, a lot of the last episodes were literally just back to back video packages. So it was the only way to, to get through it with it. Uh, with any sanity we've done as gareth always say jp we've done it now we've covered that part yes. of wrestler history that we didn't know now we know how it came to be and now i never want to i never want to see uh I, I was gonna say i never want to see a jeff jarrett funder promotion again but you know what he's like Bye. he'll come up with something there'll be wrestlers in cars or there'll be he'll go to india again or something we'll, maybe we'll do rinker king at some point um i'm sure well, i think rinker king would that. be a giggle i've you wanted want to do king for Big a while time, yeah Oh yeah, next king of the mountain. There. Oh, next um, what you call it? Dealer's choice. Dealer's choice. Um, that'll be. Yeah. But, oh, there is as... always that sword of Damocles of Tokyo Joshi Pro that, that oh. seems to be dangled out <laughs> over us as well. Which it, it every, gets less funny when you realise that we're the ones who're going to do it. But all the king. Sorry, you were going to say. 
Yeah, any of them can steal. Any of them at any moment could pull the trigger on that. And you're doing that show, Matty. I'm making it if we ever get made to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, I'm always up for it. It's Russian roulette that. with six bullets. Is what this <laughs> is. It's like. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'd, I'd say not all of them are ironic either. A couple of them actually like oh. it too. It's terrifying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully people in, enjoyed the podcast. We suffered through it, so you didn't have to when it comes to Global Force. And of course, always. But it was uh, brilliant recording with Eddie. Time. Yeah, and it was definitely, and it's good to see. Obviously, we had a bit of feedback in the uh, in the Discord yeah. as well. Uh, another place you can support us for free, but um, good to uh, to yeah. hear people have been uh, listening to it and uh, enjoying it. Um, always great to uh, to get that back. And yeah, the only way we can uh, keep the the momentum going, lads, is after the. Uh, after doing that, we're going to be uh, celebrating, as we've uh, been talking about these last couple of uh, weeks, our, uh, our five-year uh, anniversary of uh, podcasting with our patrons and YouTube members with a uh, Ask Scrapple special uh, this weekend. Saturday night, can we announce that formally now? I think it's set in stone. Time. Time. Yep. TBT. It'll be after Gladiators. Don't worry, we're not going to make you miss Gladiators. Yep. I tried to arrange it to be a Gladiators watch-along, but Garrett's not going with that. Um, so <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a Gladiators post-show um, on Saturday, uh, Saturday night. Long, long holiday weekend, so no weekend show on Friday. Friday, but Saturday join us live if you're a, a patron or YouTube member and you can join mm. YouTube for the uh, low low price of uh, of 3.99 and uh, come with us have a couple of beers ask us any questions we'll talk about it uh, including gladiators mm. and, uh, and whether Wesley's gonna uh, gonna finish the story Matt I'm, uh, you have to do a catch up by Saturday you've got to watch the whole season now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tune in <laughs> like I do with the other things semis and final and I'll be me caught up then uh i was it was funny like speaking of, like the five years i went i don't know why i was I'm, we're trying to set things up uh, for next week for the, obviously it's wrestlemania week and we always uh always a busy week as far as uh covering the uh non-wdb shows going on that week so expect the uh, the usual schedule uh next week of uh of live shows for that but like i don't know why but i, I went went back in the archive to look at like when did we actually start doing it this will be our sixth WrestleMania covering WrestleMania weekend shows, JP. Because um, <laughs> we did it the year before we came grapple as well, which is quite funny because I listened back to the audio and it's only like the. We've been podcasting about a year, but it's still somehow only like the twelfth show we ever did because <laughs> we were a bit lazy, not lazier, but you know what I mean, a bit more sporadic. Yeah, yeah. Put the pod- yeah. There was having a couple of months there. We were just can get round to uh, to put one out, but uh, we kept going. We kept plugging on. Oh, it's so funny to listen back to us. Like I'd recommend anybody do it as a celebration this weekend, as we me and you put on our most professional podcaster voices, trying to be like, well, we're on the indie corner covering the WrestleMania weekend, and it's like, really? I don't even sound like me. I sound Classic like Michael. It's fucking. <laughs> You know, you piss yourself watching that match. And JP's got like a serious game. Is there a late of crisis at WrestleMania? Well, Is the video you mean version of this crisis, Ben? It's no, video, just audio, just audio, just audio oh. yeah. As we as we try to, because it was our first like stepping out of like covering um, Brit Res. We were covering. You know, oh, in very important uh, American wrestling events such as Joey Janela's Spring Break. <laughs> we felt like we have to uh, give it the uh, the journalistic uh, seriousness. We we got better over time. That's what I'll say. Uh, once the uh, the grapple ones got going, but yeah, six years of archives of them. There you go, out there for people to uh, listen to as well. Terrifying. And I and, and I bet our interest for Joey Janela's Spring Break. It'll be like, no, it was good then. It was a good laugh. Yeah. He went for ages, <laughs> completely unironically, as opposed to now, where it's like, fuck, <laughs> What oh, have I, I think, done? I think, that time's gone. Oh, I think when we did that as well. puking in a car park. That felt like the low point. I think it was literally on a whim, that as well. JP, I was literally like the day off. Fancy recording a podcast tonight. Here you are, six years later. Sorry. Um, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> but, ah, I love it. <laughs> But there'll be more uh, where that come from next week. And yeah, last plug to, uh, to mention before we get into the uh, the main stuff, which is why Matty is here. Um, but obviously we did uh, sneak out Bretro on there, Patreon and, uh, and YouTube member feed uh, last week. It'll be uh, free later in the week, but if you want early access, mm. you can uh, get that. Matty is, uh, what is it, two hearts become one? Is that the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the lingo? Yeah, that's the one. And we're covering, obviously, the half foundation matches, giving the anvil his props as well as we go along as well, it being obviously a, a Brett show. But it's the two title wins, so it's the more or less the angle slash match where they uh, beat the British Bulldogs. And then it's the two out of three falls match for demolition at SummerSlam 90. So mm. uh, a couple of tag matches to get your teeth into this month, lads. 
There we go. Look forward to uh, to that as well. And yeah, stay we're working on the uh, April schedule. Obviously, WrestleMania yes. stuff will be uh, front as mine, but plenty more uh, coming up as well as Matty tries to force through blood li- Bloodline Month in uh, in April. Uh, that doesn't sound as bad to people like, like it is. Ben, you you you're like you, you miss Shell it there. To be depends fair. on which members of the family. Uh, this is it. This is it. This you might it. talk me round on a uh, rock film club. Maybe I don't know. Maybe we could do that. I don't know. Something on a uh, Yokozuna. At- he did die down the road. You know, there could be a uh, two off the dock. Chief Ben Alpine. Uh, Mike has watched two series of the Netflix show Bloodline, which was cancelled, and has got nothing to do with WWE or the current storylines. But it, but it, it has apparently it was apparently the first season's good, according to Ron Smyers, and the second one goes to shit. It does. I've got JB, no frame of reference. There's an entry in the fr- uh, Hellraiser franchise called Bloodline as well. <laughs> so you know, I don't know if that's from the okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see uh, but yeah putting all that together but yeah Mania Week's always a big one so no better time to uh, join us on the Patreon or by becoming a, a YouTube member either free or paid or otherwise but that's enough plug lads we should uh, get into the, uh, the stuff we're going to talk about this week <laughs> and uh, hi Matty um, you Hello, ready to, to, to chat, you? chat some chat some New Japan um, <laughs> what else we got on the docket here we've got a bit of a uh, bit of chat here about uh, Ugandan wrestling uh, British Bulldog um, Terry Gordy, where do you want to start, mate? Uh, do you want to start with one of them, them, them big topics? Uh, Matt Seidel's joined the Blackpool Combat Club. I don't know if um, I've seen that. I read in Mexico, in it? For that big yeah. eight man tag this week, is it? Yeah, seen it's, that big, <laughs> big news. Seen that great news. It's, you know? <laughs> it's quite funny because this week looked like a dead week. Um, obviously, it's the doldrums before media weekend isn't it and we saw that when we did the, uh, the weekend show on friday gb when it came to the uh the previews uh, another reason we're not doing a, a weekend show on the air uh, on the bad holiday weekend is because there's fuck all outside of the uh, the revolution rumble which we're uh, gonna talk about later but like <laughs> raw happened last night um <laughs> and dare i say the game was a fucking Lots to talk about. Um, I uh, I did I did watch it live for me uh, for me sins. There's actually a couple on the Discord. Matty might be a little uh, little group of us now who, uh, who watch the feather. It's actually the perfect time. This I have that's another thing I've got nostalgia for that little run into a uh, WrestleMania uh, week when it's uh, you know the clocks have changed a little bit and it raw starts at twelve. You know, yeah, midnight like starts at twelve on yeah. a Wednesday. It's it's just a little bit more manageable. I was definitely struggling by hour two, um, but un- 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 unlikely. There were a couple of uh, very newsworthy uh, moments on, uh, on Raw this week. I thought we were going to start this show burying SmackDown and carrying on with uh, with Garrett's talking points last week, but I don't know. Where do we want to start? CM Punk versus the world. The final boss on uh, and Cody Rhodes. Um, you know, we've got to... Obviously, it's the last second to last Raw before WrestleMania, so a lot of big work obviously being put in to build up to the uh, the big matches coming up at, uh, at WrestleMania uh, next week, such as you know CM Punk versus Seth Rollins and CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre, and of course the big main event we're all looking forward to WrestleMania, which is uh, Cody Rhodes versus The Rock. Um, they're going to be on, great. Get it all out. Get it all out. Come on, get it all out. I'm waiting. Come on, get it all out. You're excited, JP? I feel like this uh, this week's TV really did a a grand job of selling. Oh wait, um, they're not on the top of their matches, are they? Um, <laughs> original stuff though, this, by the way original stuff this I was the first oh. I was the first everyone's copying me mate that <laughs> first YouTube though. video they they was, on this. They I was on this <laughs> oh. Oh, where do you start? firstly what was your reaction to, uh, to Garrett's uh, rant last week it, it, this to me obviously yeah well mm. I'll say and I said to Gareth this like he's, he's never gonna he's never like do the way as he and he's mm. if you're coming back in as as but Gar- as I got to know Gareth as well, he's one of them guys. The more people go on about it as well, he'll obviously don't want to, he won't want to miss out on it. But he's very hard to to convince as well. At the same time, Gareth, he has got his own his own mind and his own lane, and that's great and that's fair play. And as I said before, doesn't sound like anyone I know. I don't agree <laughs> with what he said, but I enjoyed the emotion. I enjoyed the tirade out of it. You know what I mean? But. I caught, but I caught up straight away with with the rock concert. What I missed, you know, it's it's the rock. And uh, let's just start with that. It's the elephant in the yeah, room with defend the rock. Let, you know, uh, where do you want to start on it? Like the rock, I'm not going to sit here and say Roman's a bigger star than the rock because obviously he's not, and that would be stupid to say. So I all this, no, no, well you, well you have, and everyone has. Every time we put any fucking Twitter on and Discord on, that's all they're mentioning. Roman's not here. So where are we starting with this? Because it's pissing me off. It's absolutely <laughs> pissing me right off. I'm being serious, though, lads. I know that's why it's funny. No, because there was the the big tags. It started off uh, the big tag standoff the other week when I hear yeah. people, including yourself, Ben, but not just you, were like, "This is the big match." 
they were promoting the tag match because all four of them were in the ring. So they weren't promoting Cody v Roman in that one where people were saying Roman was just in the background. They're promoting the tag match. So what do you want him to do? He's beat Cody. He doesn't need to say nothing anymore on none of these. It's up to Cody, which he done last week, to be fair, in the tearful promo to build up. his. He's got to win. Roman Reigns doesn't have to sell this match, Benno. He's I mean, beat he does Cody. No, yeah, but he's done it. In, he's done it in the bits he he's had on. He yeah. has. Smackdown was horrendous. What do you want him to do? Do you want him to come out and start singing and dancing and saying, I'll be Cody? He's the heel, he's the champion, doesn't need to do anything. Cody's His got to say His performances sell have been lacklustre, if we're jumping right into it. Smackdown last week, that was, and it was Roman and Cody. It was Cody as well, it was. It was both that, of them. It, that it didn't was, hit the heights, yeah. It compare was. Those, compare those two segments, how lame duck that was with Roman and Cody and the staging of it and the, oh, two people are coming from the crowd. It is two, it's the most awkward, flat ending to SmackDown possible. You compare that with what happened on Raw this week with, you know, Rock coming out as a surprise at the start of the show. For WWE, like an all-timer beatdown angle um, at the end of uh, Raw this week, like night and day as far as comparison um, well, ben, points go. Sorry to keep jumping in if I do, apologies, but well, of course it's going to be. He gets to say fuck and there's blood. It's going to be better. It was better. I'm not disagreeing that The Rock's doing his own shit and that's where, because oh, I love The Rock and I'm not burying all this because it was great. It was fucking unbelievable. That's it probably really where was. we should start. I wasn't yeah. not start with Roman Defence Squad, mate. No, but then, but, but if you're getting to do blood and you're getting to say fucking shit every other thing, of course it's going to be better. That's no reason to put Roman down because he's not getting to say, it's not. I've seen Punk. We'll go on to him because I half enjoyed him. I thought he was a bit of an idiot as well. He's going around saying it as well, not jumping on the bandwagon. It's like you're going to be. Pe- people are going to think it's better, Ben. It, it's easy for him. That's it's- not the reason people think it's better, mate. Come on, really? Roman Roman Reigns of all people is hard done by by the WWE. Like there's an advantage to other people, not Roman Reigns. Like no, like you know, that's not a start point as a comp- of, of a conversation. But what I'm saying is right. If Roman Reigns started saying fuck and bust the Cody up, we'd be saying exactly the same thing about the Rock. We would. That is fact. That's night. That is factual. We would. It, He's getting better Rome- material. I'm saying they did, yes. they did disappoint though. No, they did. I'm not saying that was because I watched it and the fans were flat as fuck for it as well on SmackDown. I'm not saying yeah. it was a great segment by any means. And in comparison, Rocks was better. But I'm saying at the same time, if Cody and Roman had blood and the gang warfare exploded and was saying fucking shit all the time, we'd be saying that was amazing, wouldn't we? we genuinely would. Well, is that a defense? Yeah, absolutely. Like it is yeah, in lackluster. And Roman, you might as well have a wanted missing poster out for Roman Reigns right now. I, like I whether it's Roman far. Reigns' I fault, whether it's Rock's fault, he has been dwarfed in this bill by Rome by by the Rock. And I've been saying it since the first week, since the first time, as you just alluded to, the past Triple H in the corridor. He's looked meek. He's looked small. He's been little brothered. And with the power that Roman Reigns has in that company, he's allowed himself to be little brothers. Like, him not being on Raw this week just added flame to the fire. He's not on SmackDown this week. He's got one more show next week's Raw to put a little bit of juice in into, into this match with Cody. That is absolutely his job. Like, he hasn't. When he's been there, it's not been great. And him not being there has allowed, rightly or wrongly, the Rock to take all the headlines and Rock deserves some blame. Rock, if anything, almost needs to rein it in a little bit. No, he but does. He is chewing scenery. But it, but he, he does at the same time, ones, but it's so good. He, but is he, taking, he, he is taking all of the headlines, but it is really put Ro- Roman Reigns, who is the strongest, best pushed wrestler in WWE in years, does look lesser than. Like, that is the whether you want to discuss why he does or why he doesn't. I think that's you've got to accept that's true at this point. That like he looks several notches below below Rock, and I said it last week and I said it the week before. It's not like we're out of runway. It's not like they can't claw this back. But that SmackDown segment was so important, and they shit the bed. He's not on Raw. He's not on SmackDown. He's on Raw next week. I doubt he's going to be able to pull it pull it back. And more than one party deserves criticism for that. WWE deserves criticism for that because, like I said at the top, said that as a joke, mm. but they are absolutely, you know, as exciting and entertaining as these segments were on Raw, you know, they are focusing on matches that aren't actually happening the week before WrestleMania, and it is a problem. And, yeah, rightly or wrongly, it has little-brothered Roman Reigns, and I never thought I'd see the day. Like, he, 
he's not in good shape right now. He needs to pull something out um, with this last bit of TV time he's got coming up because, yeah, he doesn't look good. I would generally agree with you, Benno, on this. Sorry, mate. This is like the, the, the problem I have here. He's been well, exposed because I wouldn't go that so you, you, I wouldn't go that far, Benno. He has. That's, I don't think I, he has. He's not a good I, promo. I, he's not a great promo. He's not on the rock's level. What the what Roman no Reigns one is, gets by on. No, one no is. absolutely not. But what Roman Reigns gets by on is aura. And a lot of that aura is from being the it's it's kind of chicken and the egg from being the strongest push wrestler in WWE. And it has worked absolutely. You can point to you know different TV ratings over the year. You can point to the overall success of the bloodline. You can look at the business in general and the success of the business. I'm not somebody who would take that away from Roman Reigns, but I do think a bigger boy and Rock coming in has exposed Roman Reigns' limitations. And I didn't think I'd say that. But this is a situation. I think the situ- I think what they they did is they created a situation entirely of their own making. They didn't need to get The Rock involved in this storyline in this way, but they made that balls up. They did the course correction. We had the press conference in Vegas, and then we've just been on this, like, it's just been this The Rock ride, basically, what feels like that. And because he's got skin in the game, and I know this has been mentioned in the chat, he feels like it's a dangerous combination for Roman because you've got The Rock coming in, but he is really motivated. Like, I mean, I saw this this point being raised about like, you know, from a business perspective and from a PR perspective, it feels like there's there was like a lot of rock fatigue. Mm. Like, if you want to put it down to that, whether it be the films, whether it just be him as a person, just people have just like, they've seen him so much over the last few years. And what we've got here is him coming in and he just, he just take, decided, right, this is like my world, effectively. Mm. And he knows what's going to work and what's going to connect. And he's just going with it. But obviously, the problem is, is it can, like, there's no one who'd be able to live up to this, let alone Roman Reigns. And I just don't mm. think he's been remotely prepared for it because this hasn't been a situ- you know, this just feels like a situation that's kind of just come out of nowhere in the last month. And, you know, like I say, we're a bloody week away from mania for crying out loud. Mm. And look mm. where we are. And so, yeah, he has. He's completely o- overshadowed him. And I think, like, the, the blame goes in several places. I think the problem, the thing I had about the SmackDown angle is, is by the end of it, I just thought, what's the fucking point? Like, yeah. really, what was it? it? It Like, it didn't, it, it, it was so lacklustre, and, and especially compared to the Raw stuff. Like, I probably watched more Raw, like, like on Discovery today than what I normally, like, I completely tap out. But I had to see that that angle at the end and I wanted to see it kind of uncut. That's, that's why I ended up going to Discovery Plus, which obviously just beeped mm. out swear words. Mm. And it was, was, what do I come away wanting to see? I want to see The Rock versus Cody. That's yeah. the fucking story I want to see and that's the angle I want to see and that's not what we're going to end up seeing at Mania. And there is a, there is, a, the there is an is issue People this. forget this. People forget the tag match is happening. People keep going to Roman and Cody. The tag match, the building uh, that up as well. And I get it, JP. And I, I'm, of course you say, I agree. We've got to have a Cody Rock match after WrestleMania. Totally got to do that. And I'm, what I will say about this as well, and I'm glad that it probably won't happen now, it's not going to be as straightforward as The Rock's going to turn and help Cody. I think we've got a lot more juice in a heel Rock for a bit, which you'll think Roman will end up turning face somehow. But that's another story for another time. But I do think people are forgetting about this tag match a bit, just a little bit as well. I do. I really do. I don't think Seth Rollins has helped with that. If we're going to be absolutely <laughs> frank on that front as well, but it is. Seth and I think there's just a thing where, with with <laughs> all of this stuff, and then if you tie in like some of the other storylines, mm. all of the top line mix in WWE, particularly after last night, I have to say, like I've got no emotional investment, as we'll always say for this, mm. but it's just kind of like all gone to hell in a handcart, like mm. you like you intimated at the start of the show. All the stuff being built, none of this is on Mania, like, at all. Yeah. And it's just, like, weird and wacky, and there's people kind of going over the top. And I will say, making for a more unpredictable product is more enjoyable for me, but it's not good for them necessarily as a company, and it's not good, like, kind of long-term. It's almost like they're, they're like, hot shot in shit, and they don't yeah. really need to. But that's Where kind of what, what's happening. This? this is what we were saying with Gareth last week. Like, rather than the... I mean, I... I don't think Roman needs you to defend them, Matt. We need to have an actual conversation about, like... Because we're not invested in this. You are. 
And there's a massive problem right now with the way they book these shows. Yeah. Like, there really is. And it has. Again, I don't buy the excuse that oh, it's, it's The Rock, so of course he's going to overshare with people. I thought it was Roman Reigns. I thought Roman Reigns was this generational, gigantic star. They've they've gotten the balance wrong because they've then- lowered his stock over this over this period. They've lowered the stock. I know what you're saying. The tag match does matter on night one. I'm way more excited for the tag match than I, I am night two. But night two matters too. This is this is probably the end of Roman's story. This is probably the end of this like all timer uh, title run happening on the second day of WrestleMania. And it oh, deserves it? an all time. Is it though now? I say to you, Ben, I, I was. But it should be all hands thinking. on deck, should it not? Like whether it's Roman's fault, whether it's the company's fault, like it should be to to suit this all time title run that you've been enjoying this entire time. It like it feels right now that it's going out with a whimper. There's absolutely but, time to pull it back, but Jesus. But that's why it's hard for me to think about it, and, and I'm I'm going both ways in here because I do think the way, as you say, I don't think it's getting. Obviously, The Rock taking away, like I keep saying, that's building the tag match. That's getting a bit more focused than the world title match at the minute, yeah. So maybe I'm thinking, well, maybe they're going to sneak Roman with a win. But what you'll get at the end of night one, Ben, or what you're looking forward to the most, will be the setup for night two, regardless with the stipulation, with what will happen after it and stuff like that. Something will happen. So we will all be excited by bell time because something will happen. But I, I can't sit here and agree with all of it because I'll, I'll take the L from SmackDown where it was... He did. It was flat. I couldn't believe the lack of reaction that they were both getting face to face. I couldn't believe it. Cody and Roman. It was bad. I thought it was like a bad editor. So yeah, they, they were. But this that he's been up stage all the time. Like I keep saying, no, the, no, no. The angle they had the other week when he acknowledged me, Rock, was brilliant. Even I wasn't even as bad way people were saying okay, that, mate. I think you're on no, your own on that one. It, was it I? Wasn't that great? I, I, I sold out arena. Of, was reacting, Benno. I know, it, but no. that's not that's no, not defense of Roman Reigns. That's like it, it was that wasn't bad angle, at all. But it, it's not it's it's not a counterpoint to how Roman Reigns has been made to look every time he stood next to Rock. Like that's not enough. He needs something, no. and he hasn't been given it or hasn't taken it. More to the point. But that, but that's where, and I, and it's where you're saying Roman Reigns, Matty. Yeah, he's Roman but, Reigns. Yeah, in I know he is, Ben. Roman but, Reigns. But that's where it's gonna deal. No, it's gonna come, isn't it? This is yeah. all gonna be part of this fucking what they play out for their feud, isn't it? This is all gonna come out eventually. And I'm not the let it play out guy like you like to say. But there's more stock in that with Triple H, how he likes to build, and the Rock won't wanna. It's a four flat, as JP said. He's got a lot of shit in this, hasn't he? So it's it's gonna be a long term build to where that'll all come out in the end at the minute if we're looking at it kayfabe and in wrestling we're looking at it obviously from breaking it down if we're looking at it in wrestling then the rock's helping the rock's helping roman reigns he should batter cody who he's gonna beat on night two if we're looking at it in that sense why would roman we're not come looking out in that sense and st- yeah but why is he gonna no but why is he gonna come in here and say why is he gonna stand i don't think He's this little, but it's this quick to dismiss thing that I've always had a thing with. When Roman has one little slip, and granted, I know what you're saying. He's Roman Reigns. Everyone it's jumps on it. WrestleMania. It's not one oh, slip, mate. Man. He's got one more show before the biggest bit. Like the made, like Chris says on the, on the chat there, the night two main event of WrestleMania is next week. Well, this is where I don't know. Is he going to lose it? That's what I'm thinking now, honestly. Because I, I can see, oh, it's hard for me to. I mean, you should have lost it last year, but I'm not opening oh, that. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> no, not going back now. Be fine that had happened. It'd I'm not going right back now to that. Full story. Fucking with the hell! Sense. I mean, they've lost. I mean, you look at like up and down when it comes to Roman. You look at like, I mean, the a big problem I had with the SmackDown angle was, you know, Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa being treated like these fucking it's threat of death. Cody's in the ring, like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? It's fucking Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa. Like their stock has been lowered over the last while. So I've it has on here, the hottest, yeah. the hottest storyline in WWE that they've had in years and years and years. I think it peaked. Probably at Money in the Bank when we were there, because that probably was like the, that was the postscript to the end of like the, the, the story the arc, yeah. story, and that was like the thing, and it's just kind of stumbled along since then. And I think, would you not agree? Everyone's at a, at a lesser point than they were, maybe even this time last year going into last year. I agree maybe? with like, Solo and and Jimmy totally because they have they've been beating like drums. I've said this on here every event we watch JP, then B pay per views we covered. Getting beat by Cena, LA Knight. No, there's not. It needs to be more. Me and JP, we agree on a lot of this. Me and JP, we said the more members should be added in. Don't care who the other. Just for bodies, Ben, as you're right, for the visual of 
God, there's like a gang going to attack us. I get that side of it. But I just, I don't know. It, it's hard for me to... I don't know. They have definitely been... And I can't believe with Solo. We're with Jimmy. I can kind of get it. But the way they put Solo over Cena, and I read the stat today, and I know it's mainly house shows, he's like Norton 34 since he's beat Cena. That's insane to me, that. That mm. is like, what, what are you doing with that? But with the Roman thing, I just... I, I said this the other week as well. Last year's WrestleMania literally was lightning in a bottle for the build-up to it all. Every match, the Usos, fucking, I mean, Sami Zayn, Roman and Cody, Ray and Dom, it was all built. It was all perfection. This year hasn't been a patch on it to build. It hasn't. It, it, it's had its moments, of course, but as an overall car, because they're still throwing matches together as well. Last minute, which they didn't mm. last year. Everyone was pretty, you know, this, we're still waiting on a Dom and Ray, you know, Santos match. We're still waiting on a Bianca Jade match. So, Overall, because of the rock coming in, it's it's structured the whole fucking top to bottom of it all out. If you're asking me, but and I know I'm going off topic a little bit there. No, sorry, but yeah, no, I think you've touched on a bigger problem. That yeah, is what's happened. Mm. He's like he's the ended in the mix, and everything is up in the air. Mm. I like the rumble. I was I was ga- I was expecting that to be gutter. I was you know not. I'm punk injury as well insane. as an help as well. To be yeah, fair, yeah, yeah. But I thought that was guaranteed great show, and it's kind of middling. And like yeah, Triple H. Definitely, you know, for this Gigi's booker, um, as his tropes, doesn't he? And, it, and he, you know, he isn't lighting the world on fire right now. It almost does feel like he's just grabbing at things. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like right now, like, Roman Reigns is like, I think, you know, we talk about the bloodline being cooler. I think part of the reason the bloodline's cooler, I know we agree to disagree on it, but I think a, a bit of it is Roman Reigns' absence. I think the other thing that Rock has brought, as well as, like, this just you found fucking passion for doing this and you know he chews scenery he goes out there and he'll talk for oh he's amazing he and, is he is you know swear it up a storm as yeah. you did say and all of that stuff and he'll do and he'll do all that and he's all excited to do it and like yeah it's put him in a you know he's he's made himself the headline but what it's done as well as exposing i think roman reigns's limitations as a performer i think it's also exposed the limitations of roman reigns in that like roman reigns is often absent and this week is a perfect example of that. Like, it wasn't a week for Roman to be absent when WrestleMania is next week. Rock turned up and Rock grabbed all the headlines. Like, that's it. It is a problem and it's become more of a problem. I think it's all, we've, we've agreed to disagree on it over the, over time. And there's definitely positives to being the champion that's exclusive and isn't there all the time. But they've gone too far with it. And I think at this really important moment, I think Roman's allowed to, to uh, it's been outworked by a better worker in every way, on TV, in real life, politically. He's allowed this to slip through his hands, I think, a little bit as well. Go ahead, JP, sorry. I was just going to say that. What am I thing, saying that's wrong? No, what am I saying that's wrong? Then? No, no, I, because <laughs> the thing that The Rock has is even if he's not on TV, he's mm. present. He has a very active social media profile. Mm. So he is constantly out there. He is doing something or saying something. That's how we end up with him doing the skits and the big cowboy hat and the rest of it. But it the up. thing with Roman is Roman goes and he disappears. And we hit the big problem with, like, that character is fine when they are, like, the dominating big bad. When somebody else literally comes in calling themselves the final boss, Mm. it's just like it does it undermines it that is that is in and of itself a problem and that's kind of like that didn't need to be the kind of nickname that's the kind of stuff where you go well actually no this isn't like the direct that's why i think they're gonna clash though next week or something something's gonna happen that's not a defense anymore is it that was a defense i get kept and pushed well it's the story like well tell a better tell a different story like the story's dangerous because this story is exposing the real life issue like they haven't yeah. too much into that. And Rock doesn't seem self-aware of it, unfortunately. Um, but he's fucking great, so, you know, he can do it. He's the Rock, isn't he? This is it. That's why I, I'm not as... I, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to give me defence there, but that's why I'm not even more so, because it is great at the same time. It's like, what you're saying, maybe oh, we'll, you know, nice. we'll go back and forth on, but you can't deny how good the Rock has been at the same time. He's not coming in shit in the bed. He's doing these brilliant fucking angles, stuff that hasn't been done in years. Like we said with the swearing and the blood. It's fucking great, isn't it? And it's it is getting a buzz, so I can't sit here and say anything <laughs> other than that because it is it's it's fucking brilliant. Like that was that was the story of Raw last night. We'll get into Punk in a bit, but Rock and Punk just coming in and for better or worse, showing up the people who were there week to week. Yeah. Like we can talk the positives of it. That rock, like everything he did, like for the opening segment mm. was was great. You know, with the little kind of like the tease of the whisper, and then that beat down 
And like, I like it wasn't it was subtle as well for WWE in that like oh, there's parts of it. Don't get me wrong, that aren't su- that aren't subtle. But they never at any point went, oh, you know, we've we've managed to get a professor so and so here, and they've worked out what Rock actually said to Roman. They uh, Rock said to, to Seth. They kind of let people figure it out for themselves, and then did the big right, big angle at the end end of the show that most people didn't see coming, and it was proper. Uh, Rock's come in with a fresh perspective too in that like it's not just these saying swear words and the word wrestling on telly he's come in with a wrestling mindset and done the most basic wrestling angle you can ever do which is beat down a baby face and bloody a baby face and fuck me was he good in it like he was just brilliant it was I could have watched it for another 10 minutes I would have uh, uh, you know someone who likes Cody liked to a little couple of hope spots maybe a couple of punches in there maybe felt a little bit Booker T and Steve Austin in the supermarket that I didn't uh, didn't love that side of it but you know they know better than me and that sells you know I was going to say it again. That sells Cody versus Rock. The tag um, match. The tag match. Sells, I guess it sells the tag match. But it, it you know, it sells you on wanting to see Cody get his yeah. revenge. Like we got we got a little bit hung up on the on the on the Roman Reigns conversation there. Like let's just talk about the positives of it. That was fucking brilliant on Raw last night. It was an angle on Raw with blood and fucking guts and swearing and stuff. And you know whether it's whether Seth Rollins can cry about it backstage all he wants. At the end of the day, he is The Rock, and The Rock can get away with this stuff, and fucking long may it rain. Like, this was unlike anything that I've seen on WWE TV in years. If you want to know, like, a big endorsement for it, I've had a message from my eldest, Tommy, who said, oh, wow. oh, can I watch Mania with you? And I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting it. And he said, oh, it might be because of 2-4, uh, was it um, 2-4, 2K24 and the new WWE game, because he's a, he's a big gamer. I was like, oh, I thought it might be it. And they said, like, but I asked him, I said, like, there's a there's a good chance this is going to come up tonight. Um, what's part of the reasoning behind it? He goes, Well, I've been loosely following the main event stuff. And they go, Have you seen the rock stuff? I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it on YouTube. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I said, Did you see the Cody stuff? He goes, Yeah, it looked really good. And I was like, Okay. That has an effect, I think, like just seeing for a lot of people who aren't necessarily like big wrestling fans or like Tommy's just had it force fed whether he likes it or not. I think it just sort of laid to a like kind Happy of like issue. a bigger point. <laughs> and he mentioned it. He mentioned actually other people at work are interested. And I was like, mm. okay, well, and I, it was like, I think part of it is a social media thing where it's people seeing the rock in a context they haven't seen him. And this is like present day rock and seeing him with this kind of level of intensity. This isn't like a character he's played. He didn't do this really in this, in his, didn't do it in his Hollywood rock stuff. Definitely didn't. <laughs> no, like this is rock from like when is this? this is like like almost nation of domination kicking out for Rook style kind of yeah. like, like we're going like all the way back a little to bit there, of like, fast and furious a little bit of pain and gain yeah. you know this is, but this is like, like like at the end like it's it's menacing in it the way he's like talking sometimes mm. at the end of these promos it's like unhinged it's great. Mm. And, and he's, he's loving it. He is. He's having a great yeah. time, and it's translating. That, as I, I wasn't even sold on Rock, like until like the last couple of weeks, where it was like, "Am I actually? I'm not sure if I'm enjoying this, but Rock's enjoying it, so I'm along with him." This was the week where I was like, "Nope, he's back. He's fully back, and he's the Rock." And because he's the Rock, like he's dwarf and everything, because he's so fucking good. Um, how did we forget he was this good? It felt like he forgot he was this good. Yeah. Um, it's just been unreal. Um, I, I don't know about like the. I don't know what you do with like the, the book and going forward. Obviously, yeah, Chris Elliott says there about like Cody should should lose to to Dwayne on night one, and that can set set up night two. Yeah, I was watching this beat down almost like it's hard to wreck on this now because if I could wreck on it, I mean Seth Rollins wouldn't be involved. You know, <laughs> all jokes aside, like he'd be the one I would take out of this if I was able to. But like the other thing I'd probably wreck on is I wonder if maybe they, they could have got away with some of this focus being so on Cody and Rock. By I don't know maybe night one the step could have been if Rock and Roman win Rock gets his match with Roman on night two you know it's and then that, yeah, you could yeah. use that to push the dissension between Rock and Roman where Roman's like yeah. I mean, what's actually after it yeah easy to say in hindsight but maybe the fact they haven't done that maybe that gives away that actually this is because they're gonna win um, <laughs> that's uh, you can't do that step because of that who knows but like. That 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 would have helped with like the through line between night one and two, but it's good. It's good, I suppose, that I don't know what's coming and I don't know how they're gonna get out of it, and I don't know how they're gonna get to to Cody and Rock, um, and how they're gonna get to presumably Rock and Roman at some point. It is the ride is actually fun, and this is a a main stream. This is a WWE angle, you know. what I'm saying this about you know, it's like even if like it doesn't make perfect narrative sense, and I'm not perfectly excited about the individual matches that they should be selling for WrestleMania. 
Am I overall more invested? Overall more excited? Maybe there's an argument that's good enough. Definitely, yeah. as, as as you say there, I don't even, I'm thinking what the hell is going to happen on these two nights and that's the best. Sometimes we always say like, predictable in wrestling isn't the worst thing, but I must prefer it when it's like this, when you don't know what's going to happen. There's so many scenarios you can do with this, because even I'm thinking of the stipulation of, of the uh, night two match and I'm thinking... It can work in both favours, both stipulations are they going to do it? So it's it's just going to be like, as you say, it's going to be a great <laughs> two nights experience for sure. And I just can't wait for it. Can't wait. I I'm big gen- on, uh... Oh, go on, JP. No, no, no. I was gonna, I was going to say is like as long as they're going to and they have to with this. Like you, you have the rock pin Cody night one. It means you can have your bells and whistles match. Mm. All various kind of shenanigans happen. Steve Austin and Cena, JP. That, oh, that, yeah. That's been going around <laughs> yeah. today. That's truck. Yeah, and JP there. They're yeah. definitely, oh. definitely running out. They're, They're definitely helping. Storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee that's going to happen. Big super oh. baby face team. Everyone's yep. going to help her hit the bloodline. Get it felt like a purposeful <laughs> shot. I will give like the, the sicko. Yes. That. I, feel, I don't think it was like thought through. I think they just happened to be shooting it and we're like, Oh, that's right there. Let's do that. Um, yeah, maybe it will be the super friends coming out to, uh, yeah. to save Cody at, at some point. But like, I've got to say, the execution of it was so great as well. Like, uh, that was good use of, you know, Jimmy Uso and, uh, and the other one. It was like the fact that it was the other thing that made it different. It was outside in the rain. Rain, it was all yeah. Wet and Cody yeah. follow, rolling around. And, you know, what a great baby face. He's sting esque when it comes to baby face. He's a lot like Cedar, in fact. I would Pharaoh say. on uh, his uh, trailer is a bit weird. Shit on the door, JP. Yeah. <laughs> Look at headshots, though, JP. What year is it? Like, he's taking, like, fucking. I know it's only, like, you know, plastic bin lids and stuff, but fuck. It was violent, wasn't it? It was the execution yeah. of it was first class. It was really great. And, and that's the bit. It, you have to have this as, like, Rock goes away to do his filming for Smashing Machine. Mm-hmm. He comes, he fin- that's finished, like, August 1st. Summer Slam's August 3rd. You don't need to do a whole lot of build. There can be time to do like non-physical stuff involving the rock and you have him and Cody at SummerSlam. Like that has to be like the direction. It's another stadium as well that they're going mm. for. And and that's gonna be like I think that's the that's the match you you've got to at least do for that because that one is less obvious of a, of a sellout, like mm. than say a, a mania, which which obviously the tickets will go just based on the name themselves, and they have gone for this. So yeah, as long as like that has to be your direction. You'd be a fuck mm-hmm. like the anything else is just like fucking about at this stage. Yeah. I'm the red hot right now. You know, it's fifteen thousand people in Chicago. Um, apparently, twelve thousand or so with CC and Punk, according to him. At least that's what he thinks. Um, but we should talk right. about the other fucking wild thing that happened on this show. Like two things I'm really into on a fucking do the B show. What is going on? We also had CM Punk versus the World in. The messiest segment I feel like I've seen in WWE in a while. Like, what the fuck was going on here? Like, Punk was... I, I, you can't tell me he wasn't gotten to here. Punk was... As, as, the way that I used on Twitter, he was rattled. He had yeah. that look in his eye that you see every now and then, that you saw when right. Hangman Page was going at him. Something's needled him there. Whether it, I, I assume it's probably Drew and his, you know, going to uh, to get his uh, his muffins from Mindy's Bakery in the day and the other day, uh, shots he's pulling. Fucking what was this? It was like completely like, uh, uh, you know, reports have come out. You know, elements of it are obviously scripted, and there's certain things they've agreed to say. There's definitely certain fucking things they definitely didn't agree to say. Nobody was greenlighting those Vince McMahon lines uh, that were in there as well. But fucking hell, this was like. Just a glorious mess. This is this is one for us. JP, I said Raw was a show for the sickos, unbelievably. Not the in-ring wrestling. I felt like Gareth once the uh, once the bell rang, but like as far as like just like again, I'm not even sure the way I describe it. I feel like Rock has been as just entertaining as he is, somewhat counterproductive to what the big match is supposed to be at WrestleMania. Mm. If he's counterproductive, I don't know if there's a word for Punk. Punk was like literally like shouting over Drew and, and Seth as they were trying to get the lines in, trying to get their music cut off, randomly trying to get chants going. Like he was like he was borderline unprofessional, I would say. This was CM Punk with a crazy look on his eye, but did it did it was result in a fucking wildly entertainment segment that felt like it was very much live and very much about to go off the rails at any segment. I've got to say yes to that too as well. So I suppose it's a result at the end, but fuck me. I'm not sure if uh, the notes they were hoping to hit with this segment that the uh, the road agents probably had, had written down um, were there because um, I maybe came out of it just 
feeling. Um, feeling I want to see CM Punk and Drew McIntyre and fucking Street Fight now rather than uh, whatever WrestleMania match it's supposed to be. I laughed my fucking head off during this. Like, I, I really did. Like, now... I... Oh, you're music, JP. No. Not only said any. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, we, yeah you're, it. you're back. No, you're on the wrong mic, JP, but uh, go, go, go. Oh, on. okay. On. I'll try and get that sorted out in the meantime. I, you talk, Matty, first while I get this sorted. Matty, what you think Yeah, I just, you know what? I was entertained because I'd, uh, I'd seen bits and bobs of like people's tweets like yourself and that. I thought, oh, something's gone off here. And then when I put it on, like I said before, I enjoyed it, but I thought Punk with him being rattled was a bit more of a tit though than usual. And I thought he was clinging on. No, I think he was clinging on a bit because I think Drew handled himself very well. I think he wasn't selling it much too. And that was pissing Punk off even more. And then he was trying to more than. And I thought he'd come off a bit more of a tit than usual. In a good way, as always, because it's punk. But I thought Drew held his own as well, to be fair, with his little comebacks. I wonder if it was like the line about because it was a bad line, the line about the skirt. Um like all the time he kept saying, like punk, yeah. Because yeah, Punk likes to see himself as this fucking woke hero of whatever. I mean, yeah. He also shouted out Jim Cornette in the same fucking promo. Unless he was shouting out the British Rest experience. I won't rule that out, but I'm pretty sure it was uh, the Jim Cornette experience. <laughs> but like he didn't like that, I don't think. I think that's probably what it is. But it was, it was I think that's why I liked it, though, because it was on that knife edge of, like, yeah. he wasn't even letting them talk. He wasn't even... But he wasn't even making sense himself. Why was he trying to get random chant started? Why was he, like, getting music cut off? It it, it was just borderline unprofessional. It was but pure under still Phil, I'd say, JP. We got you back. Well, yeah, we... Uh, according to Fightful, it was all part of the plan. And I imagine it, there's, like, that's just saving face. That's He's how I took that. No, he isn't. On here. And I generally agree, actually, with Matty on this, whereby he was. I thought the part of the problem here is, is some of the Chicago stuff came across. I thought just it was quite hackneyed at this point, and it's just like I kind of heard that. Yeah, he came across he really leans on that, don't he? He does, and he was just kind of dickish for the responses because what it did is it kind of threw the timing off for a segment because don't get me wrong like I will always complain about overly scripted stuff and you want people to be able to yeah, improvise definitely. what you don't want them to do is to have endless bits where they talk over each other trying to throw the other person off that doesn't necessarily make for like kind of like coherent promos is it still funny yeah I laughed at <laughs> it, it is no, it is <laughs> because because it was just like oh, you are clearly bothered oh you are clearly bothered by this this is what you're going to do. And yeah. like, it made me, it made me laugh, but I don't think that was the intention. The fact like when he said about like, Oh, do you want him to like referee? I mean, we'll talk about when Rollins is just like, I just, I just laugh at Rollins he, and that it completely unironically. It's just like, for he ate Rollins alive. I, I agree with Matty and that Drew kept his head above water. I don't actually think it was Drew's greatest segment. I think he was, Scram scrambling a little bit, you know, and trying to like, you know, a couple of his lines about how Punk's obsessed with him didn't really fully make sense because he was knocked off his game as well. But I like that. I like them being knocked off the game. Uh, you know, as, as much as I'll agree with the individual criticisms of maybe, you know, some of Punk's behavior here, like, like Andy says, yeah, the Vince references, no way they were past the plan. No like, way. Was, no way. He, that was dangerous game. Like, yeah. to the point where even I was like, ah, I feel like you're trying to use like, you know, the very serious allegations against Vince here to, win an argument um, that, that, that wasn't even happening, that you've just decided in your own head was happening and tried to, like, that came very close. Like, it wouldn't shock me if, like... I, I was thinking... I was thinking fines. I was thinking a backstage fight. I yeah. was like, what? Literally, I was thinking, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, and there's gonna be like a punk off fine, like a hundred thousand uh, dollars for for possibly bringing up Vince. And there was like literally a. He, he, punched out Seth Rollins or I don't know Chad Gable looked at him funny backstage or something like that it was it was close to that but that's what I agree with Chris as well a bit like JP alluded to. I don't think he got the reaction he expected on most of these things as well and overall that's, he got a he decent pop when he come out 
But the lines, he wasn't getting it. And I think that's why he was clinging more to try and be more of a tit to get the reactions. And I just don't think... I do, I think, through them, as you say, I, I think he done really well yet. So, like, I know he was knocked off the a little bit. The stand line was good, as Chris but said. He kept, yeah, yeah, he but he kept, he kept it. But Chef, I don't know. <laughs> no, no one likes Chef, do they? <laughs> Literally, yeah. no one likes him. <laughs> I know Gareth, Gareth hates Drew. Like, yeah. but, like, I love banter Drew. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Even if it's just, like, I enjoy what he does on TV. And separately, I'm not saying the same thing. I love fucking meme Drew um, on Twitter, and that meme he posted of like Bart Simpson playing chess with three different people, uh, <laughs> and it's like, oh, look at this boy, he's playing chess with yeah. three people, and he gets checkmated like the way in a row. That's Seth Rollins in it, like in every feud he's in. Drew nailed it, like and Punk literally was just like, what, what the Seth? Like, you want to know what I think? And Punk went, no, no that was it. Yeah. He was done. <laughs> he couldn't keep up. Like, he really couldn't. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's just it is. It's but as you know, are we do we taking bets on when we think Punk will be gone soon, JP? Or what it's do we gotta think? Be, <laughs> it's gotta be coming. It's gotta be coming. Like, like this, this was the closest I've felt to like, oh fuck, all that talk of like when he came out, I honestly thought I had that little thought. I almost tweeted it or put it in the Discord where I was like, ah, you know, as much as like AEW seemed tailor made for Punk, he actually seems happier than WWE. You know, whether it's because in his mind it's the big time. Time, and you know maybe he's enjoyed the you know the checks and balances of it more and for whatever reason he's on his best behavior nope and by the end of this segment i was like fuck me they've got to they probably need to keep him on a, on a short leash but then no, it's a bouncing act like this, this I'm, one, so, I'm so it's a, it's a proper walk on the fucking tight mm. fucking wire the fucking in the circus because this is what you want from punk and it gets the best out of him yeah don't get me wrong as well when he's just in there doing wrestling stuff like you said you forget how good he is at just that as well because because it's realism makes that better but when it actually is real you're towing that line of you want him like this yeah but if he crosses that line he's gonna go over the edge and it's a dangerous game but that's what the wrestlers keep saying the promos and that's what they're hoping for probably in real life so it's it's very very tough game to do uh, it's, it needs it's to be great. healed honey that's yeah. what our mate Sidrick said that today. I think that's probably actually true. It is a, it is a, an injustice that he's not been a heel for his entire comeback run. Um, we need that now. <laughs> I felt that like is wild. Feel. That to be fair, he'll be he'll be more comfortable, won't he? Uh, once we yeah. get there, and he can and he can be like this. Fuck. Um, but he'll get involved at Mania, of course, and he's going to get off the commentary table and cost mm-hmm. whoever. I think he might cost Seth by mistake, and Drew will end up champ. I think, and then obviously don't know how long see- he's out for. So. That seemed like part of it to me as well. Oh, I, you could tell he was probably like, "See, I knew the crowd would want me to be the ref." He didn't. He doesn't seem to want to be the commentator. Commentator, no. Because it went off so off the rails, it felt like Drew and Seth had to introduce that concept when it really surely should have been him. It was like they were given gifted in this, like, well, you be the commentator mate type of thing. Like, it was definitely not the script. I think. He, I think he probably felt like that, like because he literally counted them out, didn't he? I think he wants yeah. to be the. Uh, the ref is. Maybe he'll change it on the fly. Maybe your arm doesn't work, and then obviously he done the other arm. That's that's good, didn't he? And like mm. hammering it home. Oh, so fucking hilarious. I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> and I knew you were better. I knew you were better. <laughs> but again, that, that's I can slip this taker as Phil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He is. It's. It's. Yeah. At least my mic's well, working sort of now at this point. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> yeah. You're back, JP. <laughs> we got you back. Any other thoughts on uh, on punk, uh, JP? Uh, I mean, what do you say about the king of the piss takers that that you guys haven't haven't already really said? There, he's how long is he going to last? Was the question before yeah. I had to do like a quick refresh there. I'm struggling to see him there at the end of 2024. <laughs> Possibly, like he might give it a go to be in some sort of mania main event. He wants next to do that year. mania JP, so maybe that's next it. mania, and that's it then. <laughs> but then Phil Brooks is Phil Brooks, and what is he going to do? He's going to fucking tee off as well but yeah he's a it's he's the same old CM Punk it does it just feels like to me though from a character perspective turn him heel yeah like this is the thing that we didn't see in AEW that was like really frustrating the time he was there was the mega heel CM Punk I kind of want to see mega heel CM Punk in WWE because I actually think that's where the money is and I think then you go to him and Cody after you have the rock out of the way at SummerSlam, that would be that would be what logical booking would say to you, wouldn't it? Him and Chef, <laughs> and then I'll go down the line to him and Cody maybe next year. Yeah, yeah. definitely agree with that, GP. Well, we're going to some other uh, WWE headlines. I'd say I'd say we talked about well, what else happened on Raw and SmackDown. I don't care. Um, Ricochet had an all right match with uh, 
<laughs> well, it was JD Nobed, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that's it. No, the highlights from Roro Smackdown, I would guess, uh, guess Marty. Although, uh, Dominic Mysterio getting punched out by Becky, that actually was a, uh, was a good spot. Uh, it looked like yeah, a real yeah, shot, that, didn't it? <laughs> did, yeah, she digged him, 100%. <laughs> that's it. But yeah, we'll be doing the, the big uh, Mania Week yeah. uh, preview next week, so we'll talk the other day. The other fan, I mean, unless you want to spend the next 20 minutes talking about the great build to Jimmy versus Jey Uso, Matty. But, um, I mean, I can't wait for the match. I've missed the build being away, haven't I? I missed the promo. I heard you, put, I you putting it down <laughs> on one of the shows I listened to. Oh, yeah, Changing the story, like didn't we? Yeah, I think you I mean, they don't know what the story, the story is, mate. Yeah. They haven't got a clue. They don't know who turned on who first. Um, but Jay, don't get, I want to say about Raw, he's still getting the mega reactions, Ben, and I don't care if it is just his dance. He's getting that superstar fucking entrance and and thingy oh, so he, it's working and that'll be a good match. I'll obviously love it when I go five on it probably, but <laughs> as you say, maybe the build hasn't it him. <laughs> hasn't been much, but I will catch up on that. Fantastic up a mid card, I agree. And his brother, <laughs> oof, you need open an axe in your wrestling company, don't you? So you know, great to. Uh, <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, we're gonna get Roman and uh, and Rock on uh, on <laughs> Raw next week. Again, like Rocky I can't wait for Spotlight next week already. For all that, we preview Mania. <laughs> Roman hasn't got a ch- if he if he was ever going to claw something back, he hasn't got a chance with Rock there. He really hasn't. He should be on SmackDown this week. Like he should have made they should have made that happen. Um, I'm shocked he's on Raw though, Ben. Before because it was only Rock announced when for Brooklyn, and then Wendy said on Raw, Roman's got there. Tickets to that SmackDown thing and all that SmackDown before WrestleMania. There'd be all kinds happening. Not a fucking thing. Um, <laughs> all the main events are on Raw. Odd. Um, but yeah, apparently we get Jay Cargill's um, uh, SmackDown his debut next week as well. Yeah, there we go. finally getting going with there. I don't know what they're going to be doing. They've waited long yeah. enough, and it feels like because yeah. it's you know bloody obviously there at the Rumble, but mm. you know as we said at the time, like kind of looks in the main generally fine, but nothing too spectacular. What is the rumor? It's going to be her and Bianca Belair because mm. no six a, a six woman match. JP, I think I think it's going to be Naomi, Bianca, and Jade versus Damage Control. That's what I've that's what I've heard anyway. This this a uh, six woman match just to ease it in maybe in a multi multi person yeah, match. Yeah, maybe maybe doesn't well, say a lot, does it? Yeah. No. Well, moving on from there into uh, some uh, non-in uh, in-ring uh, matters, um, and I would argue in a lot of ways probably more important matters. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a little bit, a uh, little bit on the Vince McMahon stuff. Uh, firstly, uh, Ronda Rousey. Um, it's been pretty outspoken in this, uh, this book of hers. Uh, most feel like uh, well, I don't think we'd agree on certain issues, but uh, some of these lines that are uh, coming out for are absolute corkers. It refers to John Lytus as an all-around dirt bag and a six-year-old frat boy in a, in a, a new memoir. Our fight uh, is what it's called. Um, so yeah, she goes uh, goes in on Johnny Ace. Uh, he's not the only one that gets a lot of grief. Uh, Bruce Pritchard um, gets a lot of brief uh, grief in the uh, in the book from the uh, the quotes we uh, we talked about. She talks about Vince uh, apparently be, still being there by text message after his 2022 WWE exit, and obviously uh, Bruce was uh, was very much the uh, the uh, you know the the avatar um, of Vince uh, while he was uh, while he was gone. But yeah, she talks about not wanting to be the uh, Vince's uh, action uh, figure anymore. Doing she described working for his WWE like doing a custom matches for a fucking sicko in the back um jesus um <laughs> i presume you're gonna get a copy of this at some point jp but i guess when you run the rousey you can you can get away with saying these things and yeah yeah that someone's brave enough too despite what you might think about some of her other opinions yeah i think she felt she feels to me in the criticism she has all of which is, is saying stuff that we already thought in terms of the culture of the company and particularly that old guard of laurenitis particularly pritchard who's you know, ever seen knows where all the fucking bodies are buried and he's more than happy to carry on kind of working and chilling for them as well. But somebody who was like, she got, you know, in loved wrestling, wanted to get involved, got involved and saw the true horror backstage. But also because of who she is, would have seen it and would kind of been like almost like isolated from it. And it would explain a lot of the kind of like, her attitude to wrestling, particularly in the last year, we would always say she'd fallen off a cliff and it's mm. probably the fact she worked for somewhere she fucking hated mm. and she hated a lot of the people who are in charge and she hated the culture around it. Mm. So I think like this, somebody would have said something similar to this at this point. It's just that she's in the position and there is a life for her in terms of money and everything else outside of wrestling. People will hire her whether it's doing action films or any other amount of stuff, it's not like she is unemployable. 
and has like completely like, but she's gone scorched earth in WWE mm. and this is the time to do it. And I just have to say good on her. Like the, the, when she describes Lauren Ice as like 60 year old frat boy, you're like, yeah, that's exactly how the fucker comes across. Yeah. Like uh, none of it, none of what she said in about Vince or, you know, how he yeah, treats, well. how he treats yeah. the women, Pritchard and Lauren Ice. None of that. I just, none of that. I thought, Oh no, she's wrong. It's like, nah, mm-hmm. she's completely spot on. Definitely. And yeah, tied to that, obviously, uh, our good friends, uh, John Pollock and Brad Dunthair, still over yeah. a post. And, uh, and WrestleNomics have continued to do a, a lot of digging. Um, they managed to uh, dig out WWE's apparently consensual relationship policy that they uh, established in, uh, in 2023. Um, apparently, this was established as a result of uh, the Vince McMahon allegations exactly uh, one year afterwards. Um, but yeah, the three-page uh, policy was uh, was obtained by uh, by uh, John and, uh, and Brandon. Um, it's got some specific language in there about uh, relationships, consensual relationships with uh, do the board members, executive team members, even lists a load of uh, particular occupations such as CEO, president, CFO, chief content officer. And um, we know uh, some of those people are, but you know, very, uh, very clear um, response to this. Um, and obviously, yeah, there's information on there for how um, employees can, uh, can contact somebody if they want to want a whistleblow on it and stuff like this. And mm. yeah, John and Brandon said as well, JP, that they've uh, done some digging and they can't uh, track down anybody from WWE who's aware of any previous policy. So very clearly, this is something that they've uh, they've uh, brought in. Uh, I believe as well, yeah, they spoke to the uh, Dr. Lisa Monero, the Professor of Management at Fairfield University, who, yeah. uh, who's a scholar on uh, on such matters, um, who, yeah, went, gave a a bit of background on uh, you know what the uh, how these uh, things come to play and uh, how uh, they're usually um, executed in companies. When it happens at workplaces and people enter into a relationship, like the first thing you have to do once it is like a, a relationship is that you tell HR. Like mm. that's that's normally like the first port of call, and it feels like in WWE because obviously there are wrestlers who have relationships, but they're considered independent contractors. So that would be their way of getting around it. And I know one of the comments that she raised, um, Dr. Monero, about this was that this is just an okay policy because the thing that she isn't doing is they're not talking about the issue of the hierarchical relationships. They're basically saying the board can't get involved, but it's not saying about other kind of like senior management below the board. And so you've still got that possible power imbalance. So it feels like maybe that this is somewhat of a rushed through kind of like document done basically to head off the stuff that was the 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 stuff with Vince that basically feels like what what it is for me at at, at this point because you've still got that kind of like possibility there like mm-hmm. definitely like kind of like a, a, about the board and this is them trying to cover their asses in the future but yeah this is brilliant reporting from them as, as well and they're not letting this go and I think it's really really important and again like we often say about this whenever we're covering anything about this story is it's always a drip drip effect but it is still gonna there's still people looking into it, and good people in the case of John and Brandon very important work and yeah they've been uh, been doing crack and work uh, over the last uh, few weeks and months and yeah another just quick note uh, on the Vince McMahon stuff um, yeah apparently the, uh, the Netflix documentary is uh, is still going to be happening um, despite okay. the uh, WWE uh, deal um, so we're not getting uh, any uh, any change there um, obviously uh, we know we all know about as Punk alluded to with his that was another thing in that in that promo a very weird comment about uh, April and things that they do at home and Netflix and such what a, what a weird segment that was, um, but uh, yeah, obviously with that deal uh, soon to uh, to come into uh, into uh, you know existence, um, SE Scoops uh, done a bit of digging on this and found that yeah, the Vince McMahon neck docu series will still be happening. Um, the extent to uh, how, how much digging they actually do on the documentary is it going to be more like Dark Side of the Ring or the A E documentaries that we're going to be talking about a little bit later? Mm. Um, that probably uh, remains to be seen, but fascinated still to see this i think it's you know it's become very clearly an even bigger story since they started and hopefully uh, maybe it's false hope jp they're not uh, gonna shake away from that it's not in their own interest to for netflix to do this they need to almost because what it would do is is i dare i say it, if they go in like completely in after after vince and go no we're not hiding away from any of this stuff at all it's good for them because then it, you know, it's good for them. It's almost good for WWE because then what they can say is go, look, we made this documentary series. Look how we've treated the subject matter. We yeah. haven't shirked away from it. 
and yes, we are working with them and producing this program out there, securing the knowledge that this man has got nothing to do with it and the people who are um, also um, also accused. So I think in some ways that they, they kind of have to do it at this point. And it's, but it's good because, you know, and it shows like, you know, what would have happened in the, before is like a rather uh, a pre-TKO version of WWE. Mm. They would have used it as leverage of, right, you don't get access. We won't do any publicity or anything else. And I think at the same time now, like a TKO version, TKO will be looking at it going, yeah, this is good because it's like almost, it's like we're washing it. We've, we've got our, we've washed our dirty laundry. He is the villain, but we've now moved on and we're a bigger and better company for it. So it, it plays into that rather horrible kind of corporate like mm. way of trying to just like almost rebrand the company and this docuseries is going to be part of it definitely and um, well yeah another quick quick uh, before we let you go Matty a couple of uh, Wrestlemania notes from the team we'll get into uh, AEW and, uh, and other matters uh, apparently Minneapolis is uh, is looking to be the, uh, the the place for uh, Wrestlemania 41 next year uh, apparently uh, Minneapolis officials are uh, very much uh, expecting uh, so this again coming from uh, from Messi's scoops the US Bank Stadium apparently is uh, is the expected one holds a capacity of 73,000 still not 80 is it Matt um, but you know they can, uh, they, can, they can they can want and they can try get uh, the t- Take a counter on the that. gate. <laughs> <laughs> other couple of uh, WrestleMania related uh, get someone to get Brandon's thought there with a clicker. Uh, another couple uh, do the uh, WrestleMania weekend uh, type notes. Uh, WrestleVotes uh, reporting. Um, there's four one attempts to uh, to kill my computer once again. And um, they're yeah. looking to have four more matches to WrestleMania 40. Yeah. Who knows what the fuck they're going to be based on Ron Smackdown? I knew it was free, but uh, maybe another one. <laughs> Sammy and uh, Sammy, I was going to say Walter. Then Sammy and Gunther is a fucking cracker. Um, I'm quite excited for that. Um, one of the best baby faces. Me and Becky, the best, there's uh, a few. There's a yeah. few underrated on the undercard that are going to be good. Looking at like seven matches no. per night um, is apparently the plan. Yeah, I think I think they'll add obviously the Jade Mulsey woman. They'll add Ray and Dom and, and Santos and and maybe uh, the LWO and Carlito and that in one. So there's a few guys that aren't on the. Uh, that aren't on the cards yet, they can add on, and gals. Speaking of which, Meek Mill, are you excited for him to uh, be at Mania 40? Uh, I've seen Chip H uh, interacting with him the other day on uh, Instagram, was it, or something? Ah, can't believe he's it. got on notes, who is Meek Mill? Can you help? Yeah. Who, who is he? Uh, no, you know what, Ben, I'm not familiar with his music, right. I obviously know who he is, but I've, I've never listened to an album, to be fair, like... He's a rapper, a rapper I'm mostly uh, aware of via Instagram um, and his okay. various hangers on. Um, Philly based, I think. Um, yeah, Philly based. Yeah. Well, apparently he's born and raised in South Philadelphia, but he's not the person I normally go to when I think of people <laughs> who are born and raised in South Philadelphia. Now, that would be an appearance if he fucking That'll... turned up in Fresh Prince, oh. Fresh Prince Clobber. Slapped the rock as a little in joke to the Oscars and then fucked <laughs> off to the back. That would be. Don't tempt them. Fuck me, yeah. That would um, be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> can't believe Triple. I don't believe Triple H is actually up to date on his rap, so maybe yeah, he could be conned into uh, getting uh, Jazzy Jeff. He's not just seen well. Mad Max Fury Road for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not dead is he Jazzy Jeff I think he's arrived I hope so um, fingers crossed um, <laughs> the, uh, the only other uh, media week notes obviously yeah a lot going on we're going to be uh, chatting it all uh, next week uh, mm. Matty um, and yeah. yeah we're expecting uh, more on the uh, WWE and, uh, and GCW relationship uh, are you excited to uh, to watch those shows you know uh, what no you know what big night for you uh, next week I mean it's one of the worst events of the year I fucking hate it but <laughs> I do <laughs> love I love Mash yeah, I agree with you on that one Retro no. Boys won't explode over that I think she's brilliant. The matches, I'm a mm. really big fan of uh, Slamovich and Baszler. Just, it's just the sheer wildness in it, JP, of uh, being allowed to work this show, which is like and that'll be... more main roster talent fight. For yeah, yeah. So it's it's just mm. wild. But I'll give, as I say, I've, I've got a little spreadsheet together of a few matches I'm going to cherry pick over the uh, main week, and that's one of them there. So the event is bad. <laughs> Seth Rollins could come in, do some blood sports, do some uh, spring break, you know. <laughs> Isn't Johnny Johnny Bloodsport fighting Barnett this year? Has seen that on the card? <laughs> fucking he hell. is <laughs> fucking joking. <laughs> He'll be all over the weekend. He'll be oh, yeah. oh. no, Ziggler is. He's on every fucking show, isn't he? <laughs> fucking oh, hell. <laughs> well, uh, Connor, Connor does say that that uh, Jazzy Jeff isn't dead, so that's fantastic news um, for all of us. Yes, good to hear it. Um, brilliant. Um, and yeah, the only other uh, quick uh, quick news I was going to mention, uh, Pete Dunn apparently is. Uh, is doing some agent work for uh, whatever this show is, Matty. Have you ever heard of it before? It's called WWE 
High Speed, the B Speed. Um, oh, it's that's coming out soon, isn't it? High Speed is that the new <laughs> yeah, one they're bringing he's the out? Producer. Yeah, seems like yeah. a good, good role for him. I think it, uh, it works out. Um, you know, he's always job uh, for life. Another good wrestler, man. Be a shame that he, you know, I, I maybe would prefer them to wrestle maybe on WrestleMania. But, uh, you know. <laughs> they'll get in the ladder match. They'll qualify. They'll definitely get in. There's two spots available on SmackDown for the six pack tag ma- tag title match. They'll definitely get a spot. Surely. <laughs> Loves them, done each Triple H. But yeah, as Ewan says, that is on the spreadsheet list. Cardona v. Blue Kane. And they're missing a trick if Blue Kane doesn't come out with a wheelchair to recreate the spot where he pushes the wheelchair. The fucking yeah, it's Sounds got to terrible. be. I'll it's be watching that be. at six in the morning. Mate. I'll yeah. be like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? It's going to be one of them moments that. Alvarez and Orange Cassidy 2.0, but oh, yeah, oh, remember? Never, never live that down, me and yours is that, yeah. Uh... Uh, but <laughs> there we go that's the uh, the wrap up of the year of segments and yeah we're gonna uh, let you go Matty you got in you got your Roman Reigns defence in talked a bit of Wrestlemania you know um, yeah can I again. talk <laughs> this time next year yeah um, but, I'll be here next week we're all on next week aren't we previewing well, the show I don't know it's up to you mate apparently you're in charge now you can, uh, you can, <laughs> no, I'll be, I, can I be I'll... on the show next week <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you in, Ben. But um, Thanks, it's um, it. I was gonna say then. Oh, you lost me chain of thought. There. No, I was honestly like, can I give me quick thoughts on the two matches I seen last week from Dynamite? I thought Edge and Christian <laughs> was okay, <laughs> <laughs> considering like you know. But Jericho and Hook. I mean, I've got to bury the shit out of that. What is he playing at Jericho? Yeah. How obvious was he trying to put this guy over? And I spoke to Crewy about it, but is it the obvious? Obviously, the caveat of. Oh, yeah, to put this guy over. But wasn't he the first guy that Hook hasn't tapped out? Is that right? So, of course, there's that so. with Jericho. What the fuck? He just needs to go away now. Right. He genuinely does mm-hmm. need to. And he used to be good at that. Didn't he know when to go away? Because no. he's in bad I don't think he ever bad. did. I think he knew don't when he won out as welcome. And you when he got he, he went there and he jumped before he got pushed. Tony Khan is never going to push him. So he's never out the door. I mean, like he's never gonna, he's never gonna have that that problem. So he'll just stay forever. I don't. I, I think that's a, that's an over talk point that that he repeats himself. And I think a lot of it was just Vince McMahon got sick of him, or there were other reasons why you know it made sense for him to go. Tony Khan's gonna book him on Dynamite every week until he decides to fuck off. Um, just, but, next, but avoiding getting pushed height. down the card yeah. that's always what he's managed to avoid jump before he gets pushed right down like they go oh, there isn't really any value yeah. I just couldn't believe yeah, that I was, much I was a big fan of Coping Cage we talked about it on the weekend show and yeah, the, yeah. The JB was a little lower on me, on me that I, but you know, the JB liked it as well it's a good yeah. bit of business um, it's been a really well done feud that and don't actually hate Breaking news here, Matty. I don't hate Cope. Don't I was going to say, it's good to see Cope. everyone getting on the Cope train because I've seen everyone giving him praise and it's one of the line deserves. at the right place. Fair play. The line at the right place and that's but he's going that back well. down to the fucking open challenge, isn't he? Where he, he won't be obviously Jericho level where because he'll actually put these guys over even when winning. Do you know what I mean? Where Jericho just doesn't put no one over and thinks he is by losing, which pisses mm-hmm. me off all the time. But I don't, I'm not a big fan of the open challenges, but you know, yeah. if, if it's if it's what he wants to do. It's what that's what and I forgot to mention it before. I just hope Cody, if he does win, doesn't start defending the title every week on Raw again. So don't want that to turn into the US title because your world title. Imagine a title that's another one. Happening. Yeah, once imagine, a month. Not every, not every week. Not every week. Once a month. Sounds yes. Terrible. Not every week like it's the US title, but we're going to start after Mania. I agree there. I agree there. I do. I do. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, well, we're going to talk uh, some more uh, AEW Mate. now. Uh, unless we'll you've got any thoughts on uh, Mercedes or Osprey being the uh, the best. Uh, Promo and wrestling. Oh, yeah, I have actually. Um, yeah, right, opposite. Com- completely keep a microphone away from uh, Mercedes Monet, but give, <laughs> but give Will Ospreay a mic all the time because that's how I've seen dice. that promo. And yeah. seriously, the bruv thing, I'm not a fan of, but the Yanks love it. The Americans oh, love yeah. it. And fair play. And the Canadians. No, genuinely, it is. And the Canadians, of course, but fair play. But even there's lines in between about like, uh, Brian Shoes not fitting him and that, but in the other way. Fucking loved it. I thought he'd come across and I didn't think... I would be. He come across fucking mm. brilliant. So yeah, fair and play. I agree. Yeah, Mercedes. They should. You know, they rolled the dice twice. That was a mistake. Don't. Give she needs a manager. Definitely. Do something 100%. else. Not even that. Just do something else. She doesn't have to cut the promo. Yeah. She doesn't have to. Like yeah. it's not a law. Like you know, just you yeah. got away with one, lads. Just let's just move on. Oh well. Well, on that note, Matt, uh, we will catch you. Um, yeah, the uh, the weekend for uh, for our scrapple for patrons and uh, and YouTube members yes. and yeah. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you can come on the WrestleMania preview next week. We'll uh, see how for you. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm allowed, you know. for, ben, of course, of course, people. Thank you for that. Thank you, and JP. Always a pleasure, Ben. Have a good Mate, rest of the show. I'll, brilliant I'll having you back. Week. Thanks very much, guys. See you later. <laughs> See Have you a later. good one. See you later, mate. See you later. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. Liam there. Matty, a big fan of uh, socks and trackies. Look like a picture of that. Um, I wasn't yeah. back in the day. That wasn't a, wasn't a me thing, but no. uh, I could see that round here. Um, Never a good look. <laughs> but on Dynamite, yeah, obviously, there isn't much AW to talk. It was a weird weekend. Oh. There was no rampage and no collision, um, which is, yeah, very strange. I had to find other things to do on uh, on Sunday morning rather than uh, catch up with uh, with collision. And obviously, yeah, we covered uh, Dynamite and Rampage on, on the weekend show. There's all some, uh, some brief thoughts there. Overwhelmingly, though, still uh, feeling still back, JP. Still, uh, still yeah. th- things are strong. And yeah, big talking point for us was whether they can, uh, you know, as much as we're having to go at, uh, at Roman Reigns on a much lower level, we'd like to see um, Swerve Strickland grab a bit of the, uh, the headlines back from some of the new shiny stories that are uh, coming into AEW. Maybe this week's Dynamite will help him as uh, Swerve is taking on Kenosuke to cash on the show we got Young Bucks uh, Matt Jackson and Jackson against the private party um, in the uh, tag team title um, tournament well, and we have of course the small matter of Will Ospreay versus Katsuyori Shibata which was very well set up both in the promo by Ospreay and yeah. like I said on uh, on weekend show I enjoyed that they you know, used that rampage slot to give Shibata a nice little win because spoilers he's very like losing to uh, to Ospreay here but yeah expecting a hot crowd in, uh, in Quebec I think it's about 5,000 uh, tickets out to at this point and at least from a match point of view JP there's two very strong ones there and yeah, I would imagine uh, there'll be something with Mercedes and uh, something with the car there as well to, uh, to keep the uh, the vibes uh, the good vibes going and that's it isn't it I mean and I think even I mean they'll build it up for the Young Bucks party that's obviously a rematch from the very first tournament they did where Private Party beat them because it would have seemed too obvious for the Bucks to get the title at, the, at that point in time so we ended up with SCU your favourite team of Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky uh, becoming the first champions but in terms of this week's dynamite i think having osprey in a match is good because mm-hmm. i know dare i say it, i wouldn't have him doing a promo this week i'd have swerve strickland having that time being Takeshita, doing the challenge for you know doing the challenge for joe that so would be show around him this week i think he needs that yeah. i think he's just been on the back burner that little bit it's not <laughs> like we said it's not a disaster but he's been on the back burner oh. that little bit too much well We've had a situation where we have a stat, like, if you want to think like the successes, and I don't want to feel like I'm repeating the weekend show, which is patreon.com forward slash grapple. Um, if you wanted to hear, hear obviously what we said about Dynamite and and the Rampage that we did see, um, the thing that you've established off spray, mm. they're doing a job at establishing Mercedes Monet and they've established a Carter at the moment. Mm. And so you think, okay, this can be a week where they're not the focus of the TV necessarily. Osprey Shabata from an in-ring perspective, yeah, but really you can go to Swerve Strickland at this stage. And that for me is pretty much like what I would like to see them doing at, at, mm. at this point. Don't like, do you have Mercedes wrestle? That's what um, Walt was bringing up in the chat there. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. There's a part of me thinks you would traditionally, and maybe it's just my old school mindset of, you have a wrestle on the pay-per-view. That's where you kind of have that. Or do you save that for a first singles match? But it's also something you want to promote because if we did learn anything from this and like, you know, the crowds are definitely looking good. And I know we're going to talk somewhat about like the way that they're set up infrastructure wise. It's one of the very few sort of news, newsworthy stories coming out of AEW this week. Like them wrestling in front of decent sized crowds has been a little bit of a boon because at least like, at least they're hot. At least we had that last week, like, and mm. definitely the week before in Boston. And it, and it does make like a, like a kind of like a fair bit of um, difference. Just hoping again that they're continuing on this pattern, mate. That's really the thing that I, I want to see them overall do, which is it feels like that kind of reset. We're not far away from their own pay-per-view, but there's also the issue here that naturally enough, because of the new cycle, they are going to be completely overshadowed. So, yeah. I would almost say, say to themselves, just mm. concentrate on their OTV. Don't try and do anything blow away necessarily. And I think that's why you would go to a Swerve Strickland. Yeah, I think that's it. Keep the just keep it just keep it rumbling along. That this nice little yeah. feeling. Get that WrestleMania out the way. It's a great fucking April because we've got Dynasty near the uh, end of the month. Uh, kind of into these uh, well regular pay per views. Nice little uh, mm. thing to look forward to. A couple of weeks after Mania, and yeah, I mean to that point, like a big big news story. Obviously, we talked about uh, Rampage and uh, a collision being uh, off the uh, the weekend uh, this week. Uh, yeah, apparently the uh, the Mania weekend collision smart move. Mm. Uh, they've moved it to uh, a late later time slot, uh, which means on the uh, on the Saturday of Mania week which 
there's also a new japan show that morning it's gonna be a fucking day uh, as far as uh watching stuff goes 11 30 eastern time which is what 4 30 a.m our time um i'll just be having me tea at that point if i'm watching um what we'll be watching that night saturday night um oh maybe it itself of course so uh, you don't want to uh, head to go head to head with that so yeah maybe it'll just be finishing and collision will be starting perfect great little uh little yeah. time slot for him wise just stay out the way obviously there's other reasons why with march madness isn't it um going on that's the uh, yeah the reason but you're absolutely right they can uh they can hang about on the uh, on the back burner uh for now but to get into some other aw news uh, related matters apparently uh they've uh ha- hired the new coo uh kosher Airby um is the name I actually got a I got two press releases from AW today, JP. I got it. Uh, I got the new logo, which okay. is uh, which our friends at uh, Figure Four Online have uh, have rightly used there. And I was thinking, was it passive aggressive? I was like, if they just emailed me just three AW logos, uh, please use these in future. I've been using the wrong one in my uh, in my clickbait on YouTube, which has been very positive towards AW lately. Um, so you know, hopefully they uh, they appreciate it. But they did send us this as well, um, saying that yeah, um, Clash of Airby was first uh, first reported in January 2024 by uh, by Fightful. Um, and yeah, obviously, you know, AW have had a few um, high profile uh, losses, at least from the backroom staff. Raphael um, Morphy, uh, Morphy, isn't it? Of the uh, the one who you can possibly blame uh, for a few of the uh, the venues they've been running. Um, mm. Obviously, um, chief merchandise and officer. Dana Massey, which still stands out when you read that as a headline, is obviously gone from the uh, the company yeah. as well. But yeah, Abe's the uh, first name COO uh, in AEW history, um, and yeah, apparently uh, got new vice president in Jennifer Pepperman, who's finger pinch you can see over the uh, the show as well. And yeah, it's uh, checks and balances, JP, and getting um you know busy office people in busy office roles rather than you know giving it to Jake the Snake Roberts or something like that, which would be the normal uh, Tony yeah. Carr move. Yeah. In some ways, what you who do you want here? You want people who just know how to do the job, not mm-hmm. don't always work on the assumption of kind of like almost like wrestling people. At this stage, I've, I've laboured this point a lot that part of the problem they've had is things like infrastructure when it's come to mm-hmm. like marketing and having people de- somebody dealing with the day to day. Because let's face it, a lot of the times it's been Tony Khan himself, where well, he doesn't have mm-hmm. business doing it. Like mm-hmm. one of the things you do is you like you know you want to show what a good manager you are is that you you hire people to do the job very, very well. That's why you hire them. So mm-hmm. in this case, there is a lot of planning that um, this guy, um, Kosher Irby, has to do. And it's been like, I think it's been like a, what, about a month and a half or something, along like a couple of months since he was like mm-hmm. first announced. I remember talking about it on one of like the, the updates. Yeah, it was like January 9th. So mm-hmm. he's probably been doing like just a watching brief for the time being of just like, okay, this is the company. This is what we're doing. These are the shows we've got booked and then start to put his fingerprints on once he kind of sees how things are, what works and more importantly then what doesn't work and what can he do to change it. And I'm going to be intrigued to see what he does in terms of the venues. I've given extensive thoughts on that before about the kind of venues they run. Like, and it doesn't always need to be like kind of these types of arenas. can do that. He knows, but he knows a few fellows with there. Uh, he knows the phone numbers. A few blokes with baseball stadiums. They'll be fine. They'll be all right. Yeah, and the Orleans Arena. They can go back there. Fuck me. Um, <laughs> like look, going back to my year one uh, Global Force Wrestling Ant show. If you want to listen to that, <laughs> on the Patreon as well. Um, but yeah, well, go on, kosher. Another uh, quick uh, AW story. Uh, Jack Perry. Um, been uh, some very interesting reporting from both sides of the Wrestling Observer slash figure for online universe when it comes to uh, to jack perry um there was an initial report that uh, we covered on the uh, the weekend show on on friday um that he'd uh, apologized to tony khan that he'd been texting him and tony khan had been getting back to him and that this was this was all uh, a big angle um for his return to a uh, to a aew um, Jack Perry um, has contacted um, the Observer and disputes that. Um, says that he he didn't continually uh, ask for forgiveness following the CM Punk fight. He didn't hear back from Tony Khan for two months following it all in. Never texted Tony Khan to say he was sorry. Um, and it was told he told Tony Khan's lawyers that he would not initiate the first contact. Um, apparently, Tony Khan um, first set up a, a meeting in a, a full gear in LA where they talked about bringing him back. However, after Punk returned to WWE at Survivor Series. 
series, which, you know, whether depending on which side of the story you believe, Tony Khan is still quite mad about. Um, those plans were scrapped. Um, and yeah, apparently uh, Jack Perry is still under AEW contract. He asked for a release, which is the big headline here, yeah, but was denied. And there are no plans to bring him back to AEW. Apparently he hasn't talked to Tony Khan on months and hasn't been clear in the stuff he's been doing in Storyline for New Japan, such as turning up his contract or using the term scapegoat. Do you believe that, Dupino? Know? <laughs> That's the report. Nope. I'm reading it because it says it, but I feel like someone's getting work somewhere there. Yeah. Um, surely he'll be back. I mean, New Japan's an AW partner. Is he really going to go rogue in New Japan? What's the character he wants to create? This is all. Thank you, Brian Pillman, um, yep. for this. This is, one. and this is, oh, this is what he's, yeah, exactly. And this is what he's, he's going for. Mm-hmm. And so this completely fits into it. It's just that the previous reporting, which, sort of felt a lot more plausible it's like well how do we go against it it's like no no this is i'm really angry with aw it's like uh-huh okay, okay <laughs> yeah no, no chance like but he also has to recognize himself that this is his best chance of achieving something in wrestling is to go pardon the pun all in with a character like this as as well so well, it kind of works for him. Yeah, mm. it is yeah it is it's interesting from a very peripheral perspective I didn't watch any of his matches in the New Japan Cup. I watched precisely one match in the New Japan Cup, and I'm very glad in the decision that I made for that, <laughs> which suggested that he's, it's not going to be anything that particularly stands out. Is he going to do anything in New Japan? I don't think so. I think it's just a it's a way of keeping his name out there while you're not using him here, while there isn't really space to use him or fit him in on TV. It just feels like just put put him over there. They should be doing this with a lot more people, if I'm going to be honest. Send him out on loan. Like we've spoken about this before, people who they're just not using. And Jack Perry I, falls into it. It's just that they're, they're working a storyline at the same time. When he first turned heel, I remember, like, and I only remember this. Oh, yeah, he turned on Hook. Oh, yeah, he was a heel before he left. Um, obviously, which is, you know, all of the where the all-in match uh, yeah. came from. But like, I remember the big conversation was sticking with the books. Give him the what a card is getting now. Um, I remember like kind of advocating for that. Um, I'm kind of glad they saved it for a a card now because um, that was yeah obviously that would have been a good slot uh, for Jack Perry. It's yeah. probably what you do with him in AW at this point. Not that interested really. This is much more interesting to me seeing what he can do out of this, even if it is in you know a new Japan. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously he's in House of Torture. Yeah, this kind of says here, so that doesn't really help my interest levels, but. Yeah, it's not a. They're having a great uh, track record are they, with the uh, with the pillars at the minute. Obviously, yeah. Sammy Guevara is uh, is currently suspended. MJF is injured and has possibly had some kind of upset going on with his uh, injury that they're, they're keeping storm about. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> Darby. At least Darby's not going to go and uh, go and climb a mountain anytime soon. So at least he's still running, but he's on the shelf. Yeah, not looking good for the uh, the four pillars in twenty twenty four. It isn't, and am I upset about it? No. Not really. No, he, I'm, I'm not. Am I, am I the missing? Nickname. It was a fucking shit name in the first place. And uh, I'm yeah, not missing MJF. Yeah, mm. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. They were tempting fate here, really, and they got what they. I'm deserved. scared MJF's going to come back more than anything. Yeah. Less, less missing him, more like, oh, I'm enjoying the vibes right now, and I like MJF. MJF's great, but like, is he going to come back and be classic AEW heel MJF, or is he going to come back and carry on this Adam Cole storyline that they've? For, for reasons can, decided to uh, continue, which is fucking bombing. Like, every one of those sit-down promos at death. Like, we did we did actually talk about it when we talked about last week. Like, what the... F- like, Wardlow, is is he talking a, stuck in a time warp? Oh, he's mad at the, the stable leader who's disrespected him, and we're going to have a... We're, we're going light in the bottle for a third time, JP. Let's get that Batista moment in. Um, it'll work this time, promise. That's it. And it's not going to work, and it's never going to work as well. And like, like you, I'm worried about MJ, because it's like... Has he learned anything from this? Is there going to be any element of restraint? Because I think part of the problem was last time around in order for him to, to get him to sign a contract, there's going to be that certain amount of creative control. And I think that's the position that they've sort of put themselves into. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, like I, I, I worry about it. But if you ask me if I'm missing, going back to the bigger four pillars one, I'm not missing any of them. And in fact, I'm quite glad that all of them are off TV <laughs> at the moment for the foreseeable future. I'm not, that's fine by me. I'm much happier about that. Well, apparently we won't see MJF anytime soon, as yet has been reported by Fightful that his, uh, his recovery is uh, has slowed down, according to uh, to Sean Ross Sapp. So, yeah, we will. Uh, it's a shame they haven't got any other any other wrestlers under contract who could possibly like take <laughs> places. They've got no one. It's so weak the roster they have. <laughs> Fucking hell. Very true. 
Uh, well, moving on from there, yeah, other quick uh, AW notes. Apparently, uh, Wheelie Utah's still not medically cleared either. Uh, mm. So Matt Tidell has joined the Blackpool Combat Club for this CMLL show. Oh, um, not the natural fit that I would have expected. I assume Shibata's not available. Um, <laughs> oh, well, um, it's a CMLL show. When is that show? Is it it's like the, it's in a couple of weeks, isn't it? Like first week of April. I think it's after, after Mania weekend. No, 29th of March. Oh, is it this weekend? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's happening uh, this yeah. weekend. Um, like they're, so they're, they're going to be um, so it gets really complex. I'll always say go to Lucha blog. He really helpfully kind of lays things out, but it won't be through the YouTube. That'll be on after a while. I think there's a little like pay-per-view thing that they'll end up having. So in some ways, I'm glad that we likely won't see this till some point around sort of mid April, which is fine if it falls into one of those lull weeks. Although, like, what the fuck are they? We're having a couple at the minute, quite luckily, but <laughs> it's the calm before the storm. That's why... So maybe post mania that we're more likely to see this. I think it's just them in that environment. And again, it's really what do I want to see out of all of that? As fun as it'll be having them there, as it should be there. And I'll again bang the drum, Tony. If you're doing extra pay per views, do one from Arena Mexico, a place mm-hmm. where people don't get access to in a venue specifically designed for wrestling. It would be it would be great. It'd be fucking tremendous. But really, it's that Danielson singles match mm-hmm. that like it's kind of the thing that's like of that real. Like novelty that I want to see, but it it looks like it'll be a hell of, hell of a lot of fun and it's good Got place to triple mania, mate. Alberto oh, Armstrong is one of the main events, so you know um, we definitely need to switch allegiances. CMLL, that's the promotion we're covering this year, not AAA. Um, I think we need to uh, draw that line. We need to join Alan Farrell on the right side of history with uh, yeah, we do with that one. Um, but yeah, other quick I... uh, AW uh, notes: uh, Nigel McGuinness uh, apparently saying that he, he got in a ring last week and felt perfectly okay. Um, yeah, stay in the ring in your back garden, Nigel. Um, <laughs> it's my response to uh, to that story. <sighs> he continues to push it, doesn't he, on the uh, on the commentary? Um, he was obviously talking. He talked about the fact that yeah, obviously he made his own. He, he stands by this, despite the fact we've all seen the documentary and seen what shape he was in towards the end and the medical tests he failed and such. He will stand by that it was very much his decision to step away and he could come back anytime soon. I mean, I saw him walk bow legged down Wembley Way. I'm not convinced that he can come back anytime soon, but he's still pushing it on the commentary. Isn't he? he wants that Brian match and he wants me, wants everyone to hear it. <laughs> uh, what is a clam digger? digger? Oh, well, I miss that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I am say it all the time. I think it was in Punk's promo on Raw. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Um, maybe it gets him out of the booth. I'll take that. Um, but yeah, I've got no interest in that match. Uh, all in maybe him and Danielson at Wembley said no, no. <laughs> Wembley Arena even nah I'm alright you know uh, nah. sometimes you can leave the memories alone and it's fine um, and speaking of which uh, very, the last uh, AW story uh, yeah Jake the St. Roberts apparently is uh, re-signed with, uh, with AW not a gigantic news story but um, obviously considering he does fuck all for them apart from standing behind uh, Lance Archer um, actually I think that's quite a nice story that they're just keeping him around you know follows on from mm. our conversation last week about what a great man DDP is um, you know Tony Carter doesn't get yeah. enough uh, he's basically running a retirement home for some of these uh, some of these blokes I mean he's not a I doubt, I doubt Jake Roberts has got a pension um, so nice that uh, AW are taking care he doesn't really given the way he on his promos he goes like rather off piste does Jake mm. he, he, and he is very tall which sometimes he completely overshadows most of the people who are necessarily within his stable. I'm kind of fine for this one because it isn't like when he first came in where there was just a ton of people. There was Arn and there was Tully and various others. Like we don't have as many, I think, of some of the old guy old guys sort of knocking around at ring size. We don't have a Vicky Guerrero there anymore. So if you're gonna have one, add Jake. Okay. I'm trying to think, is there anyone else I've missed out who's who's kind of there? But what is the best use for him? I, I don't really know. Backstage. But it's all coming up roses for Jake. He's got his shit together, hasn't he? There you go. Yeah, speaks to his family all hands. He's uh, he's doing well these days as well. Back, as, uh, back with the missus, yeah. which fuck me. There's some <laughs> there's some shit they're gonna get past in that relationship, isn't it? Fair play. Well, for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, quite a week for the AW in general. Obviously, I look forward to uh, to Dynamite this week and getting back on the the horse of mm. the normal. Uh, Rampage uh, Collision uh, Merry-Go-Round. But yeah, we've also got some uh, Red Pro to talk about this weekend. Got a bit of talk speaking of old wrestlers, but a Terry Gordy and, uh, and British Bulldog to, uh, to talk about uh, in a better as well from Documentary Corner. But uh, before that, obligatory five minutes on New Japan, JP. Uh, 
<laughs> I say that. I heard reports were good on uh, Yota Tsuji and, uh, and Goto. It was a long fucking time ago. So long ago that last uh, last Spotlight we were uh, hammering it going, it was pro- it's probably going to be shit, that. And then by the time people heard Spotlight, apparently it was actually quite good. Um, yeah. Did the, did the right thing for once in New Japan, putting Yota Tsuji over. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's one win in a, in a lot of L's. Mate, I watched this match. I had low expectations. I thought, oh, I'll, I'm going to watch it because I feel like I'm duty bound to. I enjoyed it. I'll go four stars. I'm not going to go like, I think it's four and a half in the Observer, which is a bit, bit, bit overboard for it. But what did we get? We got Big Match Goto. Mm. Big Match Goto can go. I know that feels like something is just like from a completely bygone era, but if honestly to God, there was a point in time where some of the best matches at the Dome on Wrestle Kingdom, it would be Goto. I don't know how that was the case, but this was, I thought, I thought it was, it was good. I didn't, I thought they worked at a really good pace considering like 23 minutes. It was face versus face. So the dynamic was good for the tournament. Mm. No interference, no house of torture, no kind of stupid bullshit. And Yota Suji, his offense is really wacky because there's a point where he does like this jump to the middle rope, jump to the top rope, turn around in the air and deliver a stomp or a curb stomp. It's like, it's just fucking fraught with danger but somehow he pulls it off he does enough wacky shit in his moveset for you to think god this is just like he's kind of (coughs) he's like he's off the reservation but I'm completely down with that Mm -hmm. and it made for like a really fun match his spear it's like he spears them but he sort of lifts them up and slams them down at the end as well we just add something to it uh, at the same time and it was perfect for what it was and I know there was a whole storyline where Goto's dad is, isn't is very well and they were playing on the idea in the opening video package where it was like Goto's won this tournament three times and then showed the fact of every time he won he lost the when he challenged the title this is the guy who's had like the record amount of like challenges without winning the title and all this kind of stuff it was great it feels like I made a the right decision to watch this match because like I say, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I could see the reasons why people are very high on it. It seemed to me it was obviously like match of the tournament. The crowd liked it as well. It wasn't in one of those like fucking, what, you know, those horrible like broad daylight shows that it feels like mm. it's too lit up and it's just like, oh, this just feels like watching like single cam fucking shit here. This is, this is a bit rubbish, but this felt like it was pretty big. Now, what do you do? Put the title on fucking Suji. Don't fuck about. Don't keep it on like. Don't keep it on Naito. Don't want to hear stories of him being a draw before in the past because <laughs> I'm going to mention this crazy world and it's called the future. And in the future, his knees don't work. Mm. And what do you do? You have him put over the young lad the way that wrestling has kind of always worked. Mm -hmm. And I like Naito isn't a good enough reason to go completely (laughs) against that. Okay. I like Roman Reigns. Apparently that's a good reason. (laughs) At least he can go to some semblance of a degree. Like, and I, and it, but with, but with Naito, it, it's Mm -hmm. like, he's done his job. You've told all of the possible stories. He himself has spoken about retirement. What a perfect way to do this and have Suji win. And effectively, he takes over LIJ. Whether you turn him heel or not, I could give less of a shit if I'm perfectly honest about this. I just think you need a new figurehead as champion. And of all of the younger guys, Suji is the one who is by far and away the most obvious candidate. You've kind of fucked Ren Narita. Yu Yamura isn't ready. Shota Umino has surprised me in New Japan, but still isn't booked in a way that suggests of like top guy contender. Yota Suji is the only one they've made the effort with. Go with him. Then have him go through LIJ. It's It would have been very modern. Itself. Very modern New Japan for Goto to go over there. Um, it would have been us to be laughing at them <laughs> when it comes around again. So I'll take that at that at least that positive. And he's the one that like, little piece where yeah, if they do a Forbidden Door, well, when, when they do Forbidden Door this year, I'd like to see him mix it up with like some top level um, AEW people. I'd like them to uh, to keep yeah. that uh, running. But yeah, on that note, a couple of other quick uh, New Japan uh, notes before we uh, we get into a uh, Red Pro's card this weekend. Um, mm. 
Apparently, the, the United J- Japan Pro Wrestling game event is, uh, is coming together with no uh, New Japan DT mm. and uh, other promotions. So we've had a bit of a, an update uh, on that. May the 6th at, uh, at Budokan. Um, so, yeah, obviously, yeah, DDT, Dragon Gate, Big Japan, and, uh, and Stardom are involved there uh, as well. For as matches announced so far, yeah, Shotrumino, Kato, Kiyomiya, and Yuki Uno versus uh, Uemura, Takeshita, and Shun Skywalker of, uh, of Dragon Gate. That's uh, an interesting little match. Uh, <laughs> Tommy, big lads here, Tommy Hirish. And uh, our boy, our mate, T- Daisuke Sekimoto against Jeff Cobb hey. and Masa Kitamiya. That's a Fuck that's one me. for the boys. That I like that. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, matches go, and uh, I don't know what just popped next to me. Not sure what that was. Um, and Hiroshi Tanahashi um, and uh, Sanshiro Takagi from DDT and Naomichi Marafuji from Noah against. Evil Renderita and Yujiro Takahashi, you can't have everything. Um, but yeah, obviously it's for the uh, Noto uh, Earthquake uh, benefit as well, which is, uh, is is nice to see. But yeah, looks fun so far, actually, that JP. It does. And they're doing a second event on June 15th as well, like um, which is going to focus on a, on a few other ones there. But there's like some just interesting... I mean, obviously you mentioned like a proper... Oh, we talk about beefy lads matches like mm-hmm. that, that fucking Ishii and Sakamoto versus Cobb and Masaki and Mia mm-hmm. just screams out for it. But it's weird that you've got Hiroshi, New Japan president Hiroshi Tanahashi, DDT and Cyberfight president in Shanshiro mm-hmm. Takagi, and effectively one of the guys who is, I don't say he's like a booker in Noah, but he's certainly one of the like elder statements in Marafuji, just as a, as a group is kind of wacky. But I think part of this was brought up as well for them to do this because I imagine this will do well ticket wise but it was done because they were worried about things post COVID in terms of wrestling in Japan and how it has struggled like attendance wise so it's interesting that this kind of era of co-promotion like recognising that they need to do stuff to kind of protect the industry Mm. and if this sort of stuff works then great like do it more often you see it more often it would just be nice if we could do some stuff where like some of these lads go into the other company as like a storyline the way that Marafuji did when he turned up in that G1 and then he had that world title match against Okada. That was fucking cracking. Love Mm. that type of stuff. You know, we haven't had as much of that, those kind of things. Or we had it, we thought we were going to have it with um, Kiyomiya, but fuck Mm. me, that was just like, just a horrible tease more than anything else so mean one it was bullying that's what it was it was uh not great it was stuff, fucking but... awful yeah a couple of other news uh, points coming out of Bushi Road. Uh, Alex Coughlin um, saying he's uh, retired from uh, from pro wrestling. Rumours had been uh, abandoned. Um, but yeah, he tweeted that he's retired and it sucks. Leave me the fuck alone. Uh, and then he said, actually, I've got some merchant gear still to sell, so don't fuck off just yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously that's a, that, uh, someone very early in his in his career, um, mm. JP, and somebody uh, I know that you were uh, particularly uh, high on um, with him. Um, obviously injury related as well. Um, never uh, Never nice to see. It's really sad. I always thought there was a good bit of potential in him. When you think of it, those original lad dojo, you had Clark Connors, you had mm. Alice Coughlin, and you had, um, what's his name? Fred Carl Fredericks. Mm. Carl Fredericks is on level up. doesn't seem to even be on main NXT. Clark Connors is, yeah, he's it's him and Driller Maloney. He's a tag wrestler in the junior division where... There was a point in time when, particularly when he appeared on the first um, Forbidden Door event, we thought, well, this guy has really got something about him, but they've not done anything with him at all outside of like that Age of Death match they did with United Empire and Bullet Club. Um, mm. And for Coughlin, it's interesting because I thought him and Gabriel Kidd as a tag team, there was like something I thought there that they could go with. Now, it'll probably end up working quite well for Gabriel Kidd because clearly he's someone I think they're going to go with like from a kind of like singles perspective as well. But it's it's sad for him. I could, could see a situation now where whether or not he goes away and he comes back in a bit because that appears to be like mm. part of the way there. But he also yeah, sounds like he's quite disillusioned with wrestling if he's immediately selling all of his gear as well. Mm. Definitely, yeah. And yeah, with the current wrestling landscape, maybe he doesn't see a, a way back uh, in or an obvious 
thing that uh, that motivates him. But yeah, be good to see him uh, come back maybe in a in a couple of a uh, couple of years. But yeah, a couple of uh, quick uh, Bushy Road uh, related uh, notes mm. uh, to go through. Obviously, yeah, we had the Stardom uh, Cinderella uh, final um, as as well to talk about JP as well as uh, more exits uh, coming from uh, from Stardom. Um, obviously, yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, over the uh, the last while over the uh, the stardom uh, exodus that is uh, impending. Dave Meltzer saying again, there's a the belief that a few of the women um, might leave in one year, and um, based on the expiration of uh, their current de- details, mentioned that Maya Watani particularly Maya could fit into that category. Uh, yeah, it's coming at some point, isn't it, JP? It is coming. I mean, I have to say, I watched a bit of that Cinderella tournament final. Partly, honestly, that the Julia Tam Nakano match, which is. I think it's basically Julia's last match in the company mm. and it was a 15 minute draw and it was fine. Mm. Like most of the stuff I saw on here was like, it's okay, but it feels like kind of like a company in flux mm. and it doesn't got anywhere near the, that was like two years ago. It was, it was on fire mm. and it was one of the big, like in terms of the crowds, it was drawing as well. It feels like it's well down on, on those at the moment. Losing Utami High Shishita, I just kind of, think is like a big blow for them because she is like potentially fucking great and she's ridiculously young at the same time but obviously you've got like Yuz- uh, Yuzuki's off Mirai my Sakurai as well god knows what the state of affairs is is it going to force Bushi Road to kind of not work them as much into the ground god knows mm. there'll always be talent is there going to be a knock on effect that they sign other people from other companies who can really tell but it's it's just not it's not really like a fun product to watch i find mm. for me not cuz like a lot of the wrestling is necessarily bad but it just feels like a lot of steam is out of the company and there's people who've been away so it feels like from a storyline perspective because of injuries a lot of it's been so disjointed so i think it's going to take a lot of good work to get them up to speed but maybe just loan a few people from AEW if they can as well mm. to kind of fill out the the foreign side it's- of things that that Very much help. seems like that relationship is alive now uh, that Rossi oh, yeah. was out the way. So yeah, um, and obviously yeah, I saw the the show was streaming, wasn't it? The uh, at the weekend, so they're making things a little bit more available. So yeah, positive too. Um, maybe yeah. with the uh, with the change in the guard, but yeah, mostly uh, negative news. You uh, you seem to uh, to see at the minute, but yeah, moving on from uh, from things. Uh, Bushy Road. I uh, should talk uh, a little before we get to the uh, documentary corner. Bit of Rev Pro JP, um, and a show. Uh, obviously, yeah, we're not doing a, a weekend show this weekend, but a show that uh, I really wish I was getting to on uh, on Sunday. Unfortunately, it's Easter Sunday on a day where London Euston is closed because that is kind of what tends to happen. Unfortunately, with these big Rev Pro shows, but as far as Rev Pro cards they put together. Very excited for this one, JP. Um, announced this week, Josh Alexander versus Leon Slater um, has uh, been added to the card, uh, which is a, a beast of a match, especially for the uh, types of uh, wrestlers we seem to enjoy and a couple of uh, uh, spotlight uh, favourites there. Obviously, uh, Michael Oku versus Leighton Buzzard is, uh, is on the card for the British Heavyweight title. We have Subculture against the uh, the Grizzled Young Veterans um, on the card as well, which is as high probable for a tag match. Yeah, that's very... Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of TNA um, on this show at Fear feels like and speaking of which uh danny lunar uh, alex windsor is on the card as well as a slew of names as far as the rumble goes it's actually quite fun um watching them you you want to keep some names for surprises and from what i've uh, i've read i believe there's a uh, or, or heard there's a couple of uh surprises to expect but yeah the uh, the names they've been announcing uh, on the twitter and amongst them jordan breaks um argo blank cameron kai uh mike vecchio they announced the uh, zach saber Jr., which i thought was a a cool one mm. as far as uh, somebody to go in a, in a rumble Shaw samuels um oscar lube and um, being uh, among the uh, the names there as well anthony gogo robbie x you can probably expect a lot of the uh the rev pro regulars but yeah it's a, it's a fun mix and yeah the uh, like uh, jordan oliver's even over it, isn't he? he's in there jj gale shigahiro irie rkj um fun list um so far jp and yeah, i'm sure yeah. have uh, some fun uh, surprises uh, up the sleeve as well yeah, and looking at the ticket sales, ticket sales look pretty good, pretty healthy. There's not that many seats that are necessarily available. Now, I imagine it's going to be like some very lunt. I can't. He, he's, I can't. Well, I, you know, the other thing is it's Man City Arsenal that day, and I'm, I'm not missing that. Like, that's that's also happening. That so, day. Jesus, and that and is it is Man City Arsenal, that's the important stuff. <laughs> it's not about him that day. It's like he rose. <laughs> Interesting. 
if Kai Havertz rises at the back post, that's the only kind of <laughs> rising I want to see when he's heading in as we can beat Man City away. Um, we on Twitter off be, the other lo- balcony, maybe. You know, <laughs> yeah, there was. Um, I mean, actually, you mentioned there, like uh, Luke Jacobs versus Connor Mills there for the oh, spot yeah. on the Rumble matches as as well. We can uh, uh, this weekend, isn't he? Jacobs on the Southampton show, which has got a, yeah. a fun little card as well. They got uh, subculture <laughs> against the um, Sunshine Machine. I think is on that card as well. How much of the how much of this card is like people who are regularly there? If you think mm-hmm. about it, it's like I mean, we mentioned there about s- s- like the TNA stuff in there. But, I mean, apart really from like Josh Alexander as like the overt kind of like TNA guy, there's a lot of people there who are like really what we would consider to be like relatively rev pro regulars. Even I mean, Grizzle Young Vets being in there as a team is kind of interesting because they haven't. Mm-hmm. It's been Zach Gibson as like the singles guy. As much as anything else, but it'd be <laughs> well, good sign to see not with James Drake. <laughs> yeah, basically exactly. In Rev Pro. But that rumble, I've got a lot of. I mean, they did it and they booked it really well last year. They gave it a really did give it a lot of thought, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would fully expect this one to be pretty much the same. I look forward to seeing this show. Like mm-hmm. I really do. If it's like live and I can get a chance to. Depending on it depends entirely on the mood that I'll be in mm. after Arsenal City. I'll be like, yeah, might have to have a have a watch of that because it's the depth that they've got. And you had mentioned there, there's a couple of people there like Igla Blank, who mm. I saw a bit of a carrot and is like mm. much more of a name there. And Mike D in there, like fucking unit, like the Belgian guy who's also signed for TNA. It's a really it's a it's got a bit of depth and there's Spike Trevay in there. Well, like Labour <laughs> I mean, well. the numbers in a rumble. Yeah. No, I'll take Oscar Loiber yeah. is like a massive bloke who's kind of yeah. a bit all over the place. I'm absolutely down with him being involved as well. And I've got faith in them from a creative perspective about how they're going to use this card to kind of even at this stage start thinking about the start thinking about the copper box and the anniversary mm-hmm. show and go towards that. And there's options. Well, they can do it like this Luke Jacobs, Connor Mills thing being thrown into the mix. That's a really interesting choice of match because like Connor Mills had done such a good job with in the last year. And Luke Jacobs would be someone who's like set up as kind of like the favorite to win it almost like yeah, that is a I could see really one, interesting dynamic. Yeah. If they were in it, I'd, 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 that, that would be, that would be my guess. Luke Jacobs, like based on, you know, get kind of momentum and just how hot he is and that you could do a year from if, if he gets the title shot at copper box then it's a year from the ishi match isn't it or at least the first ishi match and we get yeah. we get back around to uh to that i think that that makes sense doesn't it uh as far as uh giving him after how over he got as well in the copper box give him another another big spot on a card like that i can't really see past that really unless they give it to like an old favorite like as like say virginia to do something story based i guess it depends on yeah who wins out i presume oku goes over 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 late and buzzard i'm still convinced he turns heel at some point oku although mm. um i haven't been at crystal palace and seen what a you know as we always see what a great baby face he is um i can't say i'm necessarily wishing for that but a few different directions he could go it's just going to be an interesting lay of the land i think for them going into cop mm. because of course you know this is a post osprey world for them still got access to Je- zach obviously and uh and new japan talent who knows if we might get a, a, a little bit more new japan talent in the uh in the rumble itself um but yeah they're obviously you know last year's copper box was built around osprey and yeah i think that you know this year's will probably be uh very much built around the stories they can tell with the uh, the talent they've got, of which, yeah. as you've kind of noted on here, they, they've got the depth on the roster right now, and they've built up you know individual characters like the two men on screen, Luke Jacobs and uh, and Connor Mills, like a Leighton Buzzard who's got up over on those yeah. uh, two two nine shows to uh, yeah pay off some uh, some big stories on the uh, on the big weekend again. Oh, absolutely! Even a JJ Gale mm. is a reason for him to be be in there at the same time. Shah Samuels, Trent Seven. Mm. We don't, we don't think he's any much cop in the ring, but Anthony Agogo being in there, yeah? All of this stuff is just like good sense. It's not, then we're not into kind of scrubs territory. And mm. there'll be a few of the younger guys who come in. That's absolutely fine. But for the first 15 names, I'm going, this is pretty solid. Like, mm. this really is. This is. There's a really good, solid mix. And it just, again... This is what happens when you book sensibly, logically over a period of time and you work out how do you get people elevated to the point where people want to see them there. In terms of picking a winner, I mean, there's that part of me thinks it, it, 
Luke Jacobs feels like it would be too what too obvious in in some ways, and I wonder whether or not that might be like are they going to go completely left field? Mm. I was slightly worried they might end up going for an a go go. That would be like one of I don't know. It sounds like a daft <laughs> option, but it's not like completely beyond the realms the room, of possibility with him. It's just yeah. American, is it? Um, well, at least it didn't look like it was from the bits I've seen no. at Crystal Palace. Um, nah. I'm still standing by it by Luke, but I, I don't expect. I uh, wouldn't be shocked if if I got shocked. Um, and yeah, obviously, yeah, building RKJ and Oku. Everyone expected RKJ to be the, you know, the guy, and it's Oku instead. Um, including Joe when he was there, he was shocked at uh, yeah. RKJ's position, and that might be something they can pay off story wise. You could set something up there. That could be something. Yeah. Um, although, yeah, feels like more of a last year one than a than a this year one. Um, but yeah, obviously they're just coming off shows, aren't they? In uh, Coventry and uh, and Saint Nia. I know you were good, yeah. but not to make the uh, the Coventry show. Yeah, I was. And I think for this one, I mean, it's not a show that I've managed to, to, to catch up on yet. Like, I, I kind of really, really wanted to uh, on there. In terms of the the attendance, I'm like, you know, it was, you know, it didn't like, I mean, I was reading Ian Hamilton's report that he did on, on 411. One of the things that he did say was that, like, the crowd was a bit lacklustre until it, like, got to the second half of the show uh, in there. But it's them spreading out and doing it kind of carefully. And at least there's like a venue there and it is more towards the Midlands. And if you are going to use people like men like the Reese and a few of the like kind of local names from that area as well, booking it in Coventry is you could do a lot worse than do that. Mm. For sure. Well, yeah. Well, like I say, uh, jealous of anybody who's uh, who's going on uh, yeah. on Sunday. Always love a, a trip out, especially with it being your hall as well. Sure. I know. I know the Ogdens are doing like a four to five hour train journey ahead down there. Uh, I don't think I can make that work uh, for myself, unfortunately, on uh, on Easter Sunday. But who knows? Maybe I'll change. Gareth was giving me some drunk talk on it uh, on Saturday night with me. Uh, Matty and, uh, and Gareth were at that party Saturday night. Like Gareth was talking about driving down on the Sunday. I don't think that's happening now, but that's how you know the card's very strong. So uh, um, never know. Some of them might uh, get pulled out, but uh, we should talk as well. Uh, last thing uh, before we uh, we do go, as far as uh, reviews go, documentary corner as well. JP, I don't know if you uh, if you mind me calling an audible, but we've got an AE doc and a doc side of the ring to talk about. Can we talk about the A&E doc first? Um, yeah. Because I'm, I'm kind of really into these A&E documentaries this year. Um, so the Dark Side of the Ring episode was on Terry Gordy, and you know, there's some you know interesting points on there to kind of hit as well. But I honestly felt like the A&E documentary this week, the, the British Bulldog one, felt like it felt like a Dark Side of the Ring because it was a dark story. And I think what A&E kind of don't have, which, you know, I, think, I feel like Dark Side of the Ring has definitely got that more, I don't know, documentary like a poach where it's a little bit more critical and it's going to be a bit more harsh because it doesn't have that to do with the relationship that i think is obviously there with it with a and e but the positive a and e you've got is the access to footage and like i know like a lot of the talking heads on this on this bulldog doc were clearly pulled from other interviews that we have done over the years with different guys and stuff and that is a negative but the massive positive was the footage they've got you know like I, i'm not saying i wanted to see it but they're talking about Bulldog and, you know, they go through his whole career, warts and all, and the negative stuff, and his issues with addiction, but they've got all this footage of him, you know, at home when he's suffering from, you know, from bits of addiction. There's a lot of quite shocking footage they pull from, like, you know, zoom-ins on WCW shows where even as a kid looking at him on these shows, you could see him and go, something's not quite right there as he kind of ballooned in weight and kind of with a bit of an odd caller by the time he came back to the ref in, uh, in 99, 2000, but they have, you know, the you know b-roll i suppose of uh, a lot of like backstage promos he did and just generally looking much very very bad for wear but a lot of like heart family footage on a positive note from back in the day you know a lot of uh coverage of you know the team with it uh, with with dynamite kid and you know always forget the uh, the their gold born uh, origin story that's a town i've uh, gone through many a time on the way to a to a gpw show you forget that's just where those lads are from um wonder if they went to the same chippy i used to and i used to go to the gpw shows maybe they did um but yeah a lot of that stuff as well and it felt like you know the criticism we maybe leveled at aw is the cramming a lot into a and e sorry not aw cramming a lot into 45 minutes i really thought they did a good job covering like the the positives negatives and f- for the most part the length and breadth of a, a bullock's career this is the third one of these that i've seen mm-hmm. and my criticism of this would be the same criticism of some of ddp which is i wanted to see more of it basically yeah like that's that's really it like I would say that that they like while they covered some stuff, 
a lot of it was done kind of quite briefly, like mm. for, for my taste um, in there. Liam also mentions there that when they talk about uh, Davy's death, that Gordon Burns, who was erstwhile host of the Krypton Factor, um, <laughs> on, uh, in there, yeah, that he was uh, he was appearing on the news bulletin um, for Davy. But I was just so like, again, like a lot of the footage, whether it's the early Davy stuff, him as ridiculously skinny, him in Stampede, yeah. Brett as like a thorough talking head, and it is very much Brett, Diana, Georgia, mm. and Harry Smith. It's mm. them. It's a bit weird. Harry Smith talking about his dad as Davy. It's just like just call him dad, mate. He's your fucking dad. Like, show him some <laughs> well, level of tag respect. Team partner, so. I'd forgotten yeah. that that they worked together though. That the, yeah. I mean, that that was nice. It was like oh, I forgot that he got a chance to be his dad tag team partner. You know, in his very, very, very early career, like Matt Rats level early career. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I think this is the the thing about it is is that it he is a big. He's like a big character to cover. And apparently wasn't this, this was designed for another documentary they were going to be doing on the network mm. called Icons. It's going to be part of that series. And in the said it's kind of like repurposed for this. I still don't get the logic of why they just don't do a two hour block. Mm. They're looking for content. It's an easy career to kind of expand upon a lot of stuff and the, the impact. I mean, it's quite weird seeing Nigel McGuinness as a talking head because clearly like yeah. say he's, recorded it but he's not been with the company now for a for a while mm. uh, at, at this stage um yeah it, it was you know and and there's some really like in terms of like the the footage of him when he's like out of it and he's going like why are you filming me to diana she goes so you can see how bad you are yeah. like you know she was great just done as he mm. she was fucking tremendous and then you had ellie neidhart on there as well like i mean it was like of all the people they could get in, like it was great. And they talk about it like, and they could have perhaps again, just dwelled on it a lot longer as Canadian stampede mm. and how it was such a big moment for the hearts, but it's also kind of the beginning of the end in, in all of this. It's like, it's all, it's where things start to go like, like really there bad. Was a, there was a moment when they like, these two were, you know, they're talking about deaths and how hard things were going and the drug addiction and they bring up Montreal, like it's equivalent with them. And I'm like, Oh, here we go again. But it does fit in. Cause it's the reason he goes back to, you know, to WCW yeah. and, you know, allegedly injures us back on the warrior trap door, which is one of something we talked about. So I'm observe this, um, either way he was fucked at that point. But yeah, I mean, you mentioned there the early footage, very much into that. Like I hadn't, I think I knew why he was called Davy boy Smith. But like seeing the very, very early stuff where he's literally Dave Boy Smith, it's boy in quotes because he's the boy, like that's his nickname, yeah, boy, boy, because he's because he's literally 15 or 14 or whatever. Mm. He old, was at the, that point wrestling. I almost don't connect that, you know, somebody who was wrestling that age to the bulldog that you saw in WWE in like the, in the 90s. It blows my mind that they're the same human and you follow that journey. It's like, you know, the, the stuff early on obviously he gets into he doesn't even seem to want to be a wrestler um and it's dynamite that that kind of gets him into it and obviously the sad side of you know and brett's great to talk ahead in these early days where he's talking about like him literally following dynamite around and dynamite wants to leave wf so davy has got to lead wf and he's got a family at home but he's so loyal you know i've heard that story but from dynamite's point of view and dynamite's book what a piece of shit davy boy was for leaving him behind and it's like well i mean you <laughs> i feel like you were the piece of shit mate i think we all know that um, yeah with the way he treated them considering he was like this younger uh cousin who, who really looked up to him and just generally the relate the horrible relationship that they are but i found that that stuff really fascinating to kind of see it from the was. inside track of like brett being like it was so bad it came to a point where i rang dynamite and was like um yeah Stu said that uh davy has to come live with me so sorry he's like Stu never said that i just wanted to get him the fuck out of that house um yeah. <laughs> you know like probably the best thing that could have happened for us to get as great as the bulldogs were as a team to get davy away from that fucking psychopath yeah it's he, he feels like he's painfully naive Mm. But like a long like swathe of his career that like he, he he really is and just dynamite being like like a horrific influence of what you can imagine it was because they tell the story of like was it he gives him loads of laxatives in his coffee and stuff like that for no just, real no, reason there's no one else there to laugh he's just doing no. it to amuse himself oh, fuck it. I know that's the worst thing he ever did he did much worse but oh god yeah. that's a, that shows what a look, fucking scumbag it's, it's just like, an arsehole yeah, yeah. It's just an arsehole there's no other way to say it. And, and, and I think the thing is, it's, mm. it is like a really, like in terms of Davy Boy Smith, it's a strange thing where nominally he would be like the biggest British star in wrestling and it's all like, you know, and you get your, 
you know, that's why Nigel Drew McIntyre and who else is on there? Like, um, I'm trying to think of the other British wrestler they bring out for this. I might speak Regal, I think Regal's talk Regal. point as well. Regal, yeah. That's weird. Regal talks about watching Bulldog as a kid when you would have thought it'd be. Well, almost feels like it should way, be right? the other way around. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. The overactor pudding a little bit on, like, he's the whole Hogan of, like, Britain and stuff like that. It's like, uh, maybe a bit far. But it was fucking massive. Like that—that that was a big thing for me. Like when they do yeah. that jump, you know, when he leaves the he leaves Dynamite behind, and you know he comes back to the BF and he's fucking ten times larger. And Diana takes the unfortunate credit for the dreadlocks. Um, it was it. Okay, it was your idea for that. But I mean, that all—I say unfortunate. That all fit together. Like he was a fucking superhero. But by the time he came back to the BF, to the point where, like as a kid, I'm watching these tapes out of order. It was almost like there were two different blokes. There was the there was the British Bulldogs who were the fun little tag team that worked with the Heart Foundation. And there was the British Bulldog, who is like this fucking gigantic superhero megastar with a, like I say, um, a, a haircut like a, you know, a, a teenager you'd see in Butlins in 1991. But it was very of the time. And it was fucking, you know, he was, he was gigantic. It was like, my mum and dad know who British Bulldog is. That's a, it's one of those where, you know, people know The Undertaker, they know, mm. you know, Hulk Hogan, they know the British Bulldog, you know, in this uh, in this country. And it was that period, wasn't it? It was perfect timing for him to go back, especially with, obviously, you know, they, they spend a lot of the documentary talking about SummerSlam 92 and the build to that. Like, perfect timing for him, isn't it? To, to get, like, mm. this little, uh, little mega push and to imprint himself in a, in a lot of our brains. He, he was... Maybe not as big as they say, but absolutely part of the pop culture in that period. Yeah, he was. Because WWE, WWF was part of the pop culture as well. I also wonder whether or not Gary Oldman watched um, uh, uh, his look with dreads and thought, I'll have that for true romance. <laughs> That's what I'll have. I'll do that as well at the same time. Because <laughs> it's a hell of a fucking look when you think back and you go, really? Is that, mm. is, that, is that really the look you wanted to go for? It's just... just it's mad in some ways, but he was he it's because he looked large and like. And don't get me wrong, the braids and stuff. And I remembering back to an earlier show where Joe mentioned about Raoul Moat being massively into British Bulldog and getting exactly <laughs> the same haircut as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ, do you remember that? Just all like the hero of a certain type of man, definitely, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, but he um, was. He was my hero as a kid. Like I thought, it was, it was it was right what Drew and that was saying. It's like a, a oh, he's not like, wrong. It gave us all like, oh, there's a there's a guy from where we're from who, who's there, and we can, we all attach. You know, again, like we always make the joke. He was from Leeds. He was from Manchester. He was from he was from wherever. They fucking had the show coming up, um, but like we all felt connected to him for that reason. But it's quite sad in some ways that they don't speak a lot more to his sister. Like mm. that is one of like when he's speaking of undiscovered parts. Like there's a whole Auburn, bit. Yeah. yeah, like there was like you know there wasn't right really like a sort of like enough of that. I think as well mm. whereas having seen like a two go, sorry to go back to the time thing again having seen the two hour version of the Scott Hall one which again is like an extension of the documentary they've already produced it you just thought again you, you've got this time you've got all of this footage you can make this it's again these are a really good watch and it says a lot that I come away from thinking I want to watch more of these and I really yeah. do where that was definitely the case was like the WCW footage that they have of oh, yeah. the WF. Like it's literally like you went to WCW and it's not there's not as much talk of how big that was in this country. Um it was a big part of WCW, you know, being on on the equivalence of uh, of ITV Granada and the yeah uh, and the like um back I'm the doing day. the tours. Yeah, absolutely the tours gets a bit of short shrift, doesn't it? But the you know, they spend a bit of time on like the um you know, the the glory is, I suppose, and do the BF with him and Owen are a tag team and he's a prankster backstage and everyone's best mate, including Shawn Michaels, when they go back to uh, the cars to get up to it, uh, to various things, up to including, as I say, the uh, the the Montreal screw job stuff and then yeah, the, the WCW stuff like it is tragic that like yeah I, I kind of rolled my eyes when the when montreal came up but then it's like yeah well that's why he ended up there that's why he ended up so bad i mean jim Nidart with no checks and balances and you know and blow yeah. blowing up blowing up to such a degree that like i'll always remember that when he came back to do the f in like 99 2000 and then obviously there's the the meme of him throwing the bin at stephanie mcmahon but he's like a different human during that run he's purple he's not really muscular he's kind of just fat and he's got these shit jeans on and like the only positive i'd say about that little story is that like you know as we talked about on the observe this episode he clearly thought his career was over i don't want to say anything nice about vince McMahon, but at least they took a 
you know, apparently they were they were the first to call him, and you know they gave him a, a chance at the big time, and he probably, if anything, benefited from the fact that Vince McMahon wasn't watching WCW, I hadn't seen how terrible he was in WCW and how much yeah. of a jobber he was in because that was the other shocking thing when he went there and followed Brett. It was not the New Heart Foundation; they were just they were lower on the total pole than Jimmy Uso and Solo Sikoa. They were just two lads who uh, who went out there and did job matches. But they brought him back and actually put him in a bit of a main event role. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it was shocking as a kid. It's like, what, the British Bulldog's back? And he's like, we're main event pay-per-views with him and doing, he's in the six-pack challenge. And that was it, six-pack And like all of this stuff. It's like, it's a weird end to kind of his career that like he had that like second run when, yeah, and it sounds like, you know, he, he, he took to it at first and was very influenced by, you know, Harry wanting him to do well and stuff. And then unfortunately just kind of slips into the same old yeah. mistakes really and it ends as you know the way it ends unfortunately which is, is really sad but it's fucking yeah, mind-blowing to remember like that period that'd be a fun mm. period it's maybe not even fun is the word but a period to revisit at some point oh absolutely um and it's again it's him getting a push at a time when wwe are hot mm-hmm. they're a big company they're on the come up here and he's mm-hmm. work and he's in and around that and it's really it's a, it's a it's a it's kind of like a crazy situation, but just mm-hmm. these A and E documentaries—they are well worth your time. Even if you know, even if you want them on as wallpaper in the mm-hmm. background, they'll completely do that job. Mm-hmm. You just want to see, you know, a group, a, a documentary that's just generally well made mm-hmm. and covers all of the storyline beats, and you learn a few things Looking from them as well. Like, yeah, I do. I re- yeah. Next week's going to be the tester. Huh? Like I, I've, you know. <laughs> oh fuck! It's Roman in it. Oh, yeah, it's Roman. I might not watch that one. It's WrestleMania week. I'll be busy. Oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, I forgot. We were hyping that one up. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, yeah. I, again, I'm with you. We enjoyed it. It's just great, like kind of background view. And I'm gonna go back and watch the Scott Hall one. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen that one yet. But I love the DDP one last week as well. And yeah, just loads of little um, bits of uh, wrestling history that I'd not thought about in a while. But yeah, Dark Side of the Ring on the other hand, I thought the Terry Gordy episode was pretty okay. But I just felt like I'd, I'd seen the story a few times too many recently. It, it makes sense to do it now at a time when you know you've got obviously focus on the Von Eriks and world class and, and all of that. So I get it from a tie-in point of view. And the way things are learned too, you know, I, I, I didn't fully realise how bad things got when, you know, we came back and did the executioner running through the BF and I'd mm. forgotten, like, that was a thing of, like, internet wrestling community lore, the, ter- the horrible RF video where shoot interview he does where oh. towards the end of his career where he just can't remember a fucking thing. It was almost a joke at the time on forums and you feel bad seeing the full concept of the story here of why he's in that position and why he can't remember it and why he's such a shell of himself considering what a mountain of a man he was in his uh, in his early career so yeah, certainly uh, things to glean there uh, 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 JP even if it's a you know a story that's been there told a few times I think that's it I mean I have to say I probably enjoyed it maybe a little bit more because I'm like you know I see world class really like and I'm like thinking I really mm-hmm. like them I, I like the the, the free birds as well mm-hmm. but then there's that evolution from him being in the free birds to then him in Japan mm-hmm. and like all of the various kind of and and it's also can I say on the talking head front it's got Cornet used in the best way possible which is basically his wrestling historian he's always so I know a lot of people like that's that's when he's at his best that's mm-hmm. when he's he is particularly good he's in some ways, it's quite similar as a parallel to the Davy Boy Smith because this is someone who wrestles as a child. Mm. Like this is his job; he's doing it from when he's like, was he fifteen? Like as well, like sorry, fourteen. He's wrestling on TV because he's a big unit of a lad, mm. and that's what he does mm. in there. And like he is somewhat of a of a prodigy. And then it's like, it, it, I didn't know about the WWE story where he meets Vince and they all get so pissed up and he falls asleep in the office and they show a little bit of footage of them coming in and they're gone within like a week. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, that's it. The, and and then it's like him getting his look together where like, was he? he has his, both his ACLs, both his knees are fucked. So he gets Richard Simmons in. It was that really kind of like... The, the, the American didn't have any Mr. Mo- that though, did they? I didn't believe that to be honest. I yeah, know, that's true. <laughs> I feel like that's an old vibes tale. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Davy Boy Smith had Mr. Motivator helping him <laughs> to prepare for some of his runs. Couple that would of be uh, stars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that really would have been the equivalent for that. And they build mm. up the Gordy versus Masawa, and mm. you've got his son saying it's one of the greatest matches of all time. Mm. It's fine. 
like I had a watch of it. I had it on in the background after this. I was like, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Is there better All Japan matches? Absolutely. It's fine. He's in good shape. He's like a good big guy. Um, you know, there's a bit on Miracle Violence Collection, but I suppose it's it is like it follows like a familiar pan, and I think it just gets very very depressing when he gets when he's when he goes into the coma and he comes out, and you're like Jesus Christ, like that yeah. shoot interview stuff is just it's horrible to watch because obviously how do those how do those interviews work? It's Rob Feinstein peppering them within with questions, isn't it? And him being completely un unable to kind of answer these as he was never good at them it was just memories of um any good road stories yeah. like give me a fucking question that's not a question <laughs> there's the things that's open and closed questions mate and uh yeah i mean it's uh, again i'm on the lower level of uh that fucking gobshite uh, crimes but oh, i always hated yeah. them they were always terrible um but they got the access to these guys didn't they and it, it was that was it you know uh that's it but yeah it, it was definitely it was a thing of internet law at the time and feels kind of dirty now kind of knowing the uh, yeah. a bit more about the uh, the, the behinds of it um i yeah, completely I forgot he was king of the death matches that i i've seen it but i fucking completely forgot he was there mm, death match yeah, terry he's got desperate didn't he <laughs> death match terry there you go that could potentially be a title if if we don't go with wank fest um which was uh, what, uh, what Cody called uh, yes <laughs> the Roman and uh, <laughs> match that was on the uh, on my list as well. Right, Wank Fest XL. That's what we're looking forward to uh, next week. GP, we kind of, uh, got a, uh, that's the other uh, new name according to uh, to Cody Rhodes. Fucking hell. Um, but yeah, anything else on, uh, on Terry Gordy? Um, obviously, Bruce's beef fake is next mm. week's uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Um, <laughs> that'll be a nice uh, breezy one, I'm sure. It'll be the. I mean, I've, I I imagine a lot of the paragliding mm. accident. As well, him doing coke while working for the fucking New York subway, like that mm. type of stuff. Called people thinking it was an anthrax attack, <laughs> wasn't it? That, it'll be that. But he's already been on it, like with the Marty Janetti one. So he'll be course, there with a big yeah. smile on his face. He'll be loving those old stories. His wife will be all over it, like she was all over that Marty Janetti course, one yeah, as well. Yeah, that. that this feels like a cheap one. Like they've gone, ah, we got up, we got it all in the can anyway. Yeah. He was trying to tell us stories about Marty, but it was really about himself. Um, I, I will say, I'll to get into it more next. Well, if we get a chance to talk about it next week, actually, it might be a while before we chat it. But he was for a while. For a while, young Benno. You know, we've gone through like the you know the the CM Punk. Claw, Shawn Michaels, Ultimate Warrior, even being one of my favourite wrestlers. Predating Warrior, Brutus Beef, oh. was my favourite wrestler for a short time. Because he was Hulk Hogan's best mate. And I wanted to be Hulk Hogan's best mate as a kid, so therefore he was cool. Um, you watch it back now, he was never cool. Um, neither no. was the Booty Man, neither was the Disciple, neither was any of the other gimmicks. I'm sure there'll be a there'll be a Shotmaster-esque like, five minutes on all of the gimmicks, won't there? It'll be like Dave Meltzer reeling off uh, every the Zodiac, all the gimmicks he's... Uh, he's ever done um, I can actually picture what that episode's going to be already oh I can immediately see it while loads of uh, Hulk Hogan's mates oh, we're not he'll make an appearance I mm. doubt it he's like well you're, you're as good a mate as, as he's been to fucking you following you around for your entirety of your career you'll at least spare the voice lads a couple of minutes to chat about <laughs> him probably won't because that's Terry that's our tell well, yeah, on that note, that's uh, Dark Side of the Ring. Anything else to uh, to mention, JP? Obviously, yeah, we've got uh, a scrapple uh, coming up at the, uh, yes. the weekends. We will uh, talk uh, anything else I suppose we've missed. But, uh, yeah, any other uh, news stories or anything you want to, uh, to get in before we go? Well, I'm going to hold off on some the the booking of uh, soft ground wrestling from Uganda, which I know I'm late <laughs> to the party. This Didn't Ugandan last wrestling by the stuff ring. has been around. I'm aware of that. It I'm is. even later than you, mate. I've not seen this yet. I'm going to watch it before our scrapple at the weekend. Can you wrestle in mud? Yeah. Like, it seems very difficult. It's like playing football on a beach. I imagine it's just like, you think, oh, it's a piece of piss, this, and it's fucking not. It's rock hard. Uh, we'll save it for our grapple because it feels perfect for that type of stuff, which, if you want to listen to that, patreon.com forward slash grapple uh, in there as, as well. Like, uh, uh, it can only be described as an incredible angle. Incredible angle that they've, they've done here with Lord White. But again, I'll leave it because you need to see this. Like, you do need to see it. Ballsy. Ballsy I've booking. I'm not sure I do, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it could be Ugandan Vince Russo, for all we know, like, for, for what's going on here. Um, yeah, what's the other note? I've written two stories, minor TNA stories. Motor City Machine Guns are gone from TNA by the looks yeah, of it. We knew that was like, coming. Yeah, a nice little is, goodbye backstage. That's nice. They did. 
on there. And apparently Killy Kelly hasn't. But I'm less bothered about that, frankly. Mm. I'm not really. Kelly, yeah. So, yeah, she never turned out to be what it was. In terms of multi six machine guns, it's interesting. Where do they end up? I mean, they've got good New Japan relationships, so that wouldn't be a surprise of a landing spot. Although, but then the talk is really AEW. That would mm. be the place to bring them in. Personally, if you wanted to go completely left field on this, WWE should think about them, even if it was just for NXT. Like, I think there would be like back some back in the day, these are done. That'd be like when, when the uh, American Wolves got that little uh, couple yeah. of week run. Um, you could picture that, couldn't you? Uh, uh, one. But, uh, yeah, Shelly did stuff with it because she did, didn't he? Uh, in NXT. Um, so, but they're well liked yeah. as well. Mm. And I don't think that's like, uh, but where will they end up? They'll end up in AEW. <laughs> they will do. So there's the mode no one. It'll be on a rampage or a collision coming up, one hundred percent. My fear is, is once we get beyond, I've never been the biggest Mo City Machine Guns fan as a team. I like mm. Alex Shelley more than I probably like Saban, but he's probably just overexposure. If I'm going to be frank, but I've seen them for so long, so many years, and you've seen all the Ring of Honor stuff with Alex Shelley as well in Ge- Generation Next. So mm. I, I, I just think, like for them getting out of TNA, would you be that surprised if they leave TNA and then they just come back? because sometimes that happens. Mm. Is this just them seeing what the lay of the land is? They've kind of done as well as they can do from wrestling, these lads. Like, I, I, you know, and then the problem is if they go to New Japan, New Japan, they go, I'll put you in the juniors division. And you're like, for fuck's sakes, just put them in the heavyweight tag division. I'm fucking about. Like, you know, but like I say, yeah, they'll be, they'll be on rampage wrestling against fucking, I don't know, top flight. That's that'll be a thing that happens. <laughs> well, on that note, that uh, brings us to the uh, the end of the show as far as uh, everything uh, going on this week. Yeah, as I said earlier, we will have um, next week. Uh, next week's spotlight will be. Uh, I was going to say the, the the big Grapple Mania preview edition. I think it might now be the uh, the Wank Fest XL um, preview uh, show on uh, on Tuesday. Look forward to uh, to that in the normal spotlight spot. But yeah, as we normally do, we'll run through the entire uh, mm-hmm. gambit of uh, everything going on WrestleMania weekend, uh, GCW, uh, the ROH uh, show that's going on in the week as well, NXT running hall of fame everything uh, will be ran down next week so yeah big fat preview show next week um and then yeah this weekend of course uh, ask grapple on the patreon and then next week uh, you can uh, join the patreon or, or the youtube and uh, watch us talk through um another mad wrestlemania weekend as well as everything else we're gonna have coming up in april but yeah look forward to all that folks unless there's uh, anything else from you jp that's it all i've got to say is bye We'll catch you next week. See you, up.